When the 1991 NBA Finals came to a close, one MJ had passed the torch to another MJ. A new era began as the Bulls won their first of five NBA championships. Seven seasons later, there is a new kid on the block, Kobe Bryant. Some call him the heir apparent. The 19-year-old is the future of a rebuilt Laker lineup equipped to end the Bulls' championship run. Is this the end of an era? The Bulls, saddled with injuries, remain to be contenders in the East and have set the championship standard the Lakers want to attain. Welcome to Chicago, and there is a buzz at the United Center here that you only get for the very special games, and we've got one tonight as the Los Angeles Lakers take on the Chicago Bulls. The Lakers one half game out of first place in the Pacific Division and the defending world champions right now in the middle of the pack in the Central. And good evening everyone. I'm Dick Stockton along with Hubie Brown and Brian Burwell. Are these the two teams that are destined to meet in the NBA Finals in June or are we witnessing a passing of the baton from the Bulls to the Lakers. In any event we've got a marquee matchup and both teams playing at or near the top of their game. Hubie, the Lakers continue to succeed without Shaquille O'Neal. They are 10 and 5 without him, and it's because they've got a deep team and really not dependent at all on one man. Well, Dick, they're rotating 10 players, five averaging double figures, and no one is attempting more than 13 shots. That's big. When they score 100 points or more, they are 14 and 0. So you've got to keep them in a half court game where there are only four wins, five losses. It's a deep bench, and they come in with 37 points paced by Kobe Bryant. And then they have the slashing inside and post-up game, which gets them to the foul line 32 times a night. You must solve the half-court trap. If you do, you keep them out of transition basketball. Now, the Bulls also without a major star, as everyone knows, Scottie Pippen won't be back until January. And uh, when we talk about Michael Jordan, Hubie, we always talk about his offensive exploits. He leads the NBA in scoring. But defensively tonight, he's going to have to contend with Eddie Jones and then off the bench, Kobe Bryant. Yeah, you're looking at a tough night for Michael because he has to do it at both ends of the floor. And then also, he's struggling with his shot for the first time in his career. 42% from the field, only 19% in threes, 76 on the line far below his averages. This team, by the way, only one player shooting over 45%, and that's Tony Kukoc. So how are they getting it done? Well, we're going to give it to you big time. They're 10 and one at home, points allowed 86, second in the league. How about that field goal percentage against? Only 41%. Rebounding, they are a definite plus because of Dennis Rodman, and then any time, that Ku coach, as well as Harper, give it to them offensively. A very tough team to beat in this building. And even without Shaq and Pippen, we've got a slew of stars tonight. And Michael and Kobe, perhaps a game within a game. Certainly, uh, Kobe is a, is a star of the future. And uh, it's no different than when I had to play against Dr. J and, and Walter Davis and some of the other great players. I think that's the highlight of the game. But I think the game is a little bit more deeper than just two individuals. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be enough excitement or just the expectations of excitement in the course of the game that's going to keep everybody on the edge of their seats. Oh, yeah. But that's fun. That's what this game is all about. You know, you, you have two great teams playing against one another. The challenges are there. The excitement is there. Now it's just time to go out there and play and let it all hang out. Right now, we're off to the United Center. Holiday heavyweights, Lakers and Bulls. Eddie Jones leads a deep and talented roster into Chicago, where Michael Jordan has held down the fort, helping the Bulls win 10 of 11 at home. L.A., Chicago. Stockton, Brown, and Burwell set it up next. The NBA on TBS is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great tastes that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light by Jeep, makers of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, Cherokee, and Wrangler. By Fila, featuring the new GH4s, change the game. And by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Here at the United Center, the Chicago Bulls with their 500th consecutive sellout on Monday and their win over the Phoenix Suns as what has become tradition here, the Bulls Players being introduced with the spotlights and the lasers in the darkness. 14 and 9 on the year for the Chicago Bulls. Not what they are used to. 
But there is a long way to go, and they're starting to get their game together. Meanwhile, the Lakers at 18 and 5, who have won three in a row after losing three games. Nick Van Exel and Eddie Jones at guard. Rick Fox, Eldon Campbell at center in place of Shaquille O'Neal and Robert Ory, the other forward. The Bulls, who have won two in a row, they'll start Michael Jordan and Ron Harper at guard. Tony Kukoc, Harper and Kukoc have stepped up. Dennis Rodman, the rebounder, and Luke Longley, who missed the game on the Monday with a sprained ankle back in the starting lineup. And right now, let's send it over to Brian Burwell. Thank you, Dick. And as you said, Shaquille is not here. He's back home recuperating from that abdominal strain. I talked with trainer Gary Vitti, and he said that Shaq is doing individual workouts in L.A. and that they're going to evaluate him over a seven-day period to determine when he does come back. Now, nobody is officially saying anything, but I have been told that he will make his return December 26th at home against the Clippers, which is a pretty nice Christmas gift for all those Laker fans. Back to you, Dick. All right, Brian, thank you very much. Dell Harris. Very steady man and an exciting basketball club. He kind of enjoys uh, what this uh, Laker team has done. They're one of the more colorful teams in the league. And Phil Jackson trying to uh, eke out another world championship, uh, Hubie, with this team. But uh, they seem to have more adversity uh, every year. Well, the biggest problem has been their shooting as a team. Also, Michael Jordan under 50%. And then you, you have the... Uh, lack of winning on the road. They are only four and eight away from home. This is something in their five championship seasons where they either had the best or the second best road record in the league. We have a problem with the game clock, thus the delay before we get underway. And of course, the Bulls uh, sorely miss Scotty Pippen, who was expected back in January uh, after going sur surgery uh, under on his left foot. And uh, all the rumors of a trade and uh, Pippen's dissatisfaction and uh, the possibility that they could still work things out. But Scotty Pippen, an unhappy injured player right now with the Bulls. Well, on four occasions, he has said that I'm never going to play here again. Now, February 19th is the trade deadline. So management has to make a decision. Do they re-sign him for the future, keep him happy for the rest of the season and in the future, or do they trade him, all right, and then get something back in return now it's interesting the names that we hear we hear Eddie Jones uh, uh, Gugliotta Austin Stackhouse Smith we hear some interesting people now can they pull something like this off well it all has to stay within the salary cap and speaking of Eddie Jones who is uh, starring for the Lakers these days uh, this is a big game for both teams even though it's one of two regular season games and we're in the middle of December they remember the results of these games and Eddie Jones talked about playing the world champion Chicago Bulls well we, we just have to take it as another game uh, a game where you know uh, they're world champions and, and we want to be world champions and uh, I just think we just got to go out and play extremely hard and it's come away with a victory. You know, it's interesting how these uh, players downplay the significance of this game. But, Yubi, you know that if, when they win the game, whichever side wins, they'll say this was a statement game. Oh, absolutely. I agree 100%. And when you think, Dick, that the Lakers are averaging 107 points a game and have the best differential, number one, 10 points a game differential without Shaquille O'Neal, that is unbelievable. When he joins this team, if they ever hit the a good stride in the second half of the season and then carried into the playoffs they are definitely going to be difficult to handle and there you see where they are ranked first in points field goals and point differential which is really one of the important uh, measuring sticks uh, of teams in the NBA with the reason why we have the delay once again we're having a problem with the game clock and while we work to get that fixed up at the scorers table we're going to send it to our Atlanta studios and an update of the scores of games being played right now so right now let's send it to Atlanta all right thank you very much Dick Stockton again a clock problem there in Chicago so the anticipation of this game between the Lakers and Bulls are going to make you wait just a little bit, longer, a little bit longer but it's going to be worth it uh, mark our words in the meantime let's give you a quick rip through these scores on this Wednesday night much of the action being played early Detroit at New Jersey you see there in the second quarter in a three point lead by the Pistons Minnesota struggling losers of 10 of 13 they're on the road at the 76ers but with the upper hand in the second quarter of play. 
Miami Heat, Alonzo Mourning back in uniform for the Heat, did not start, did play eight points at the half and three fouls, but a game decidedly Washington right now at the break. Milwaukee and Charlotte, the Bucks have lost three in a row. Charlotte's won four straight, six-point lead, under eight minutes to play in the second quarter. Cavs Atlanta big central division matchup going on at the Georgia Dome all tied up at 33s now for Cleveland and Atlanta Boston and Toronto the Raptors a dismal 2 and 21 for the season Boston getting things done in the third quarter just underway at Sky Dome and the Knicks and Pacers tonight always a good matchup at the break Indiana 43 40 the Knicks won eight of the last 11 against the Pacers but Cheryl Back to Alonzo Mourning again, yes. back in the lineup, late September surgery for him for that left knee. What did you see in that first half so far to let you know that maybe Zoe's uh, okay, he's going to be all right? Well, Vince, having gone through knee surgery myself, the one question you're always wondering about is, will the knee be stable? And we saw him with a quick baseline jumper, him slashing to the middle, and we wanted to see, first of all, would he be favoring the knee? That was not the case. And the one thing that I want, I was really curious about is to see if he was going to come back with the same intensity and the same aggressiveness that he had before the surgery. But there's no substitute for getting out there and banging with the guys. No, you just need your first knee. knock in order then, to get that knee stable. Then you're okay. That's All true. right, we're going to go to break and then bring you back to the United Center. Lakers and Bulls getting ready to go. We'll see you in just a moment. Joke. And welcome back to the United Center. Still not underway because of the problem with the uh, game clock. The Lakers and Bulls getting set to go, and with all the great buildup, this uh, drama has come to a screeching halt before we get underway. <laughs> but you know, uh, once we get underway, it uh, it should be uh, pretty interesting. And uh, let's see if we can get a report now from Brian Burwell on uh, the problem. Brian? Well, Dick, they say that the game clock is fine. It's the 24-second clock that's out of order, and that what they're going to try to do is go with it and use stopwatches, handheld stopwatches for the 24 second clock and I and I assume they'll just have to shout out to the referees when it's down under 10 seconds so the players will know and that's what we have right now they're still trying to figure this thing out they've got about two or three uh, work uh, workmen uh, going back and forth trying to figure out what's wrong with the 24 second clock so that's all I know for right now back to you. Well, Brian, they ought to give you one of those watches, uh, one of those stopwatches to time the 24-second clock. But more important, Hubie, as we look at the players putting their jerseys back on, some of them are shooting. Uh, you get revved up. You go through the warm-ups, the same routine, and now the stop. What does it all mean yeah, for them? Well, you know, it depends upon the guy. Each guy is affected differently. The main thing is, is once they get going up and down the floor, they'll break the second sweat. Everything will be fine. And as far as the, uh, the uh, handheld, stopwatch what they'll do is they usually announce it with either 10 seconds or five seconds uh, they'll talk to the, both coaches uh, then they'll count down now I'm kind of surprised that they have not come out with in the old days where you had the 24 second clocks on the floor on the corners in the baseline I'm surprised that they have not come out with those uh, the portable ones they're going to use the uh horn that you just heard to uh, signal the end of the 24 second clock but it looks like we're set to go now as uh, players huddle around Phil Jackson exactly one year ago these teams played a dandy the Bulls rallied down by 22 and won in overtime at the end of the fourth it was all Tony Kukoc hitting a three with 45 seconds left to tie it at 114 all and hitting two free throws with four seconds remaining to tie it at 116 that sent the game to overtime. It was a 22 point lead in favor of the Lakers. Here is Tony Kukoc with the big three and the final score in overtime. The Lakers 123 losing to the Bulls 129 to 123. Tony Kukoc had 31 points. Michael Jordan 30. And Scotty Pippen had 35. Hubie, would you settle for a similar game tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I think America would handle that one. I'd I know. settle for the start of the game. That's actually. right. If you're a Chicago Bull fan, the only time that the ball club has really played well this year is when Michael shoots his 50%, and then Kukoc and Harper both come in with over 15 points. And Dennis Rodman has a big night rebounding somewhere between 15 and 20. And in that way, it takes the pressure off the bench to come in with big numbers. Because when you move Kukoc into that starting lineup, their bench production falls off. Plus, they've had Steve Kerr and Bill Wennington 
both miss 10 games in this early 22 games already for the season. So this has been a major loss for this ball club. Keep in mind the Bulls who don't normally have more than three players score in double figured had five players in double figures Monday when they defeated the Phoenix Suns 111 to 104 which matched their highest point total of the year. But keep in mind that uh, the other time that the Bulls scored 111 points was in the double overtime win over the Los Angeles Clippers. So uh, the 111 was significant. And there you see the two players who have really stepped up as of late. Tony Kukoc, 68 percent. Right now he is the number one three point field goal shooting player in the NBA. And Ron Harper also scoring again. It's really no surprise because Ron Harper uh, had the reputation of being scorer before he came here. Well, when Ron Harper played for Cleveland and Lenny Wilkins, he averaged over 20 points a game on two occasions. When he went out to the Clippers, he did it another time. We're talking three times he's averaged over 20 for the year. He had an 18 points a game career before he came here. Now, naturally, here you got your three main scores, so his shot attempts were always cut down. But now, without Pippen in that lineup, he has got to step up thick, and it isn't like he has not done it before. We have had a 15 minute delay, and uh, if they don't uh, get started soon, I'm going to read the one lost record of every team in the NBA plus their percentages in game behind, and nobody wants to hear all that. <laughs> yeah, you're Let's go to right. Brian Burwell with another update. <laughs> Dick, you're going to love this. They're trying to find an old 24 second clock to use, and they're not sure if there are any in the building. So now what they're trying to figure out is if they do use the stopwatches what will they do to notify you when the clock hit the 24 second clock has run out. They don't want to use a whistle because that would be confusing because the referees are blowing whistles for the fouls. So they right now they're confused. They're not really sure what they're going to do. Well what about the horn that uh, we heard was well that going to they're be the working on that to see if that works I mean, if, if they can do that and I think that's what they're trying to see right now if they can operate that horn manually. Where are they going to find an old 24 second clock. <laughs> they're looking around I asked somebody no, uh, and they said they're not even sure they're in, in the, the building. old building. <laughs> yeah. They're in the closet. I believe there's a boys club around the corner. <laughs> yeah and you won't find anything there that's been uh, demolished. So uh, they're the official Steve Jabby in the middle. Uh, Sean Carbon and David Jones the other officials working this game. OK they're bringing in another board right now to see if that's the problem. But they're unplugging that. Uh, they're unplugging the one board, and they're going to get another one in there. And the third, I understand, this is now the third board. You just put that top on, right, and everything is okay. Mod modern science, you know, is naturally holding us up. In the old days, in the ABA and the NBA, right. you know, th this was a common occurrence that would be solved in a heartbeat. Where are you, Danny Biasone, <laughs> who? Uh, the old Syracuse Nats uh, owner who uh, was the one who invented the 24 second clock. Well we're going to get underway soon we hope but we do have some bonus coverage and first we're going to send you to Atlanta and our buddy Vince Cellini standing by Vince. Thank you Dick. Boy, I got a needle nose pliers and a Phillips head screwdriver in my car. I wish I was out there to fix that up one two three. But uh, in the meantime let's send you out to the Georgia Dome the Cavs and Hawks in the Central Division and uh, we'll pick this up. Here's our bonus coverage. To the United Center, Dick Stockton, Hubie Brown, more fun with electronics with the Lakers and Bulls. All right, Vince, thank you very much. Cleveland nine and three on the road and challenging the Atlanta Hawks. We'll get uh, more on that game as we go along, but we're ready to go now as the Lakers and the Bulls get set to tip it off. We've had a 19 minute delay to this moment. The Bulls are on the floor ready to go and uh, the Lakers will follow as Hubie mentioned Michael Jordan has a dislocated index finger in his right hand and uh, talking to him before the game he said his he has no feel in the shot and the shots are flat and uh, that's why he doesn't you know he's been handling a ball to try to get the feel back and what he's done is changed his game a little bit he is operating more in the paint as he did in college at North Carolina against smaller players got away from that because he had bigger teammates in the NBA but he's gone back for a more inside game as of late while uh, the dislocated finger is bothering him. Well Dick you can see it just in his three point shooting 
He's only attempted 31 threes during the course of the year, and he's only shooting 19%. We're talking about Michael Jordan, who before he retired, you know, was shooting at 34% back in the old days with the old line. Yes. A lot of people say, well, maybe it's the line. It's definitely not the line. Elvin Campbell lays it in for the first points, and we understand that all clocks are operable right now and run away. Luke Longley loses the ball to Robert Ory. Now there was a very soft full court trap, and there's your first turnover. And Nick Van Exel hits the three. He is second to Leslie Person in the NBA in threes, and it all of a sudden, five nothing Lakers. Well, you have to remember, they force the turnovers, get out in the open floor. Not so many layups. You have to be careful because they are three point dangerous in their transition game. Eight seconds on the shot clock, and Ron Harper gets the Chicago Bulls going. After a score, the Lakers push the ball very, very fast, and then look back, ball reversal. Anything can happen here. Eldon Campbell travels before the shot, no basket, and turns it over to the Bulls. Uh, this is the first meeting between these teams this year. They split last season. In fact, they have evenly divided their last 16 games, but Chicago has won the last two at home against L.A. Teams that have trapped the Bulls have given them problems, whether it's full quarter court, three quarter court, or half court trapping. Harper posting up against Nick Van Exel, and all of a sudden Robert Orley comes in the picture. Dennis Rodman misses a layup, gets his own rebound, and a new clock. That was a beautiful pass by Harper. Longley now is defended by Ori. Kukoc will fire a three, and he'll hit. Tony Kukoc at 48% leading the NBA in three-point percentage. Well, he's definitely in a groove. He's shooting 48 from the field and 48 in threes. Pretty consistent as uh, we have nearly two minutes gone by after a 19-minute delay because of a clock problem opening this game. Seven on the shot clock. Jordan guarding Eddie Jones gets a piece of it. Campbell with two on the shot clock. And uh, we will have a foul on the arm as one second showing on the clock and Michael Jordan committing the foul. Well, Eldon Campbell has many facets to his game. He can shoot the jump shot facing the basket out to 18 or 20 feet and be successful. He can hook down inside. He's got the fade away and he can put the ball on the floor. You must pay attention to this guy. Starting his 14th game and uh, impressive numbers without Shaq had 22 last night against the Minnesota Timberwolves going 10 of 12 from the line so when your center goes to the free throw line and double figures are getting it done well that's why we brought at the point at the top of the show they get to the line 32 attempts a night and you say well what's the big deal well first of all it gives you easy points and the other thing is it gets fouls on front court people on the other team equals substitutions Lakers by two a little more than two minutes have gone by in the opening quarter Bulls coming in with a 14 and 9 record in the middle of the Central Division. Five on the shot clock. Jordan does not get a good pass from Longley. Has to fire it up and hits a three. Well, Longley will throw that one to him every time, right? Hey, so, so much for a bad finger. <laughs> hey, but it was a line drive shot, I would have to say. Ori coming back, and he misses from beyond the arc. And Rodman with the rebound. Dennis Rodman back atop the rebounding lead in the NBA. Moving past Charles Barkley, who was in front. Longley working in against Eldon Campbell with a fall away, and he drops through. Longley with his basket. Well, I like Longley's game this year. He's averaging right around 12 points a game, only three bulls in double figures. He, Kukoc, and Michael Joy. He's, he's come up big whenever Kukoc was up and down at playing sporadic basketball early in the year. Eddie Jones with a good move against Jordan gets his own rebound. And inside, Robert Ory finds Rick Fox. Fox has been an offensive demon as of late, but he misses from outside and a flurry of perimeter shots in the early minutes. Well, the Lakers attempt 19 threes a game, so you know they're going to take them any time that you blink. Michael Jordan with a fall away, and a loose ball comes out to Ron Harper. Two and a half minutes have gone by. Three and a half, actually, and a blocking foul a called against Eddie Jones. Anytime you play the Lakers, if you can solve their half-court trapping, that stops them from getting out on the break. If you shoot and miss and crash the offensive board and keep the ball alive, you keep them out of fast-break basketball. Oh, nice play. Screen and roll. Luke Longley misses the layup. He was wide open underneath on a perfect pass from Jordan. Uh, Luke's got to send that down with a dunk. That was very soft. 
And Exel runs Harper into a screen and a wild shot by Van Exel misses Longley with the rebound and here's Harper Lakers are back defensively Kuko and Jordan with a fake yeah Michael Jordan went around Robert Ory as if he were invisible that was a beautiful move by Tony Kukoc because he could have forced the shot finding Michael on that baseline off a screen Rick Fox coming off a 30 point game in the last couple that the Lakers have played and it looks like he's looking for 30 in the first quarter as he takes the shot over and the top turns it over to the Bulls so the Lakers struggling early on only two of ten from the field now just keep an eye to the left of your screen you're going to see Kukoc take the double team and drop it down inside beautiful ball fake by Michael five for Michael Jordan and the Bulls lead 12-7 Kukoc from the corner. Eldon Campbell with a rebound. This Laker team will get it up in a hurry. Leading offensive team in the NBA, Eddie Jones from three, but he has Kukoc in his face. Ill-advised three-point attempt. Well, that's their game, and they're going to live by it. Uh, Van Exel and Jones both attempt five threes a game. So, you know, anytime you come down and you lay off, it's up. Double team on Harper. Longley outside pops and that's what the bull center do centers do the best they move out for the 12 to 18 footer well, you have to pay attention here now if you're the Lakers and say listen our outside game good I like this timeout by Del Harris. our outside game is struggling we're two for 11 in our last 11 shots we're not getting any second shot attempts it's all bulls can't come fast enough when you have diarrhea. We have a problem. We have a delay. We're gonna miss our window. Our guy needs Imodium AD. He needs something faster. Faster? Faster. Introducing Imodium Advanced with a new formula that adds a second medicine for more complete relief that's even faster than Imodium AD. Nothing works like new Imodium Advanced. <laughs> faster relief you can count on. The year is 2013. The United States doesn't exist! No law. You are nothing but a drifter who found a bag of mail. No future. One man delivers a message. I challenge the leadership of the clan. Inspires a nation and begins a revolution. You want a war? From the Academy Award-winning director of Dances with Wolves, Kevin Costner. The Postman. Rated R. Starts Thursday, December 25th. Hey, who's that? Hmm. She's here to meet with the big guys. On a weekend? Mm hmm Canceled her two times. Uh oh She must be a big client. I think it's her life insurance agent. Huh. That's a new one. Have you heard from The Quiet Company? Northwestern Mutual Life. Bulls off to a hot start, leading the Lakers 14 to 7. But the Lakers doing it in themselves. They have missed their last nine from the field. Well, you can see the 14 to 2 spurt there, uh, and it's all because of the fact that the Lakers are getting good looks. It's their type of game, so you cannot say that they're pressing, or you can't say that they're forcing, because that's how they play. So following the timeout and uh, Hubie deeming it a good timeout by Del Harris to step an early tie. They go low now to uh, Eldon Campbell guarded by Longley and Dennis Rodman with a rebound. Right now they are neither team is double teaming the post up play. They're both saying you know what you have to score up over the top of the defender. Bulls are 10 and 1 at home. Oh, lost only to the Washington Wizards on November the 12th. Problem they had, of course, has been on the road, as you be mentioned. One on the shot clock. Harper gets it off just in time and hits a three at the buzzer. Ron Harper, and that is the third three-point basket already for Chicago. And it's three. So it is now a 17-7 Bulls lead. Who are playing the second game in a five-game road trip. Eldon Campbell fights his way out, but muscled away by Longley. Yeah, and that's a good word, because he was definitely fouled. Uh, he was mugged on that shot. And if they're, they're going to allow that much contact in the low post, Campbell's going to have problems. Jordan with a rare air ball, but 
Kukoc on the other end with a quick pass to Longley. Slapped away into the handle of Rick Fox. Lakers have missed their last 11 shots. It is knocked away by the Bulls. It is still Lakers ball. Now, Dick, that was a beautiful move. That was a hesitation stutter dribble by Van Exel. Harper was faked out, but he recovered by reaching from the rear and getting that deflection. 5.25 remaining in the first quarter, and Kobe Bryant is going to make his entry right now. Bryant coming off a season's high 27 Friday against Houston, and he topped that Sunday with a 30-point effort against the Dallas Mavericks. Rick Fox struggling early goes to the bench. But Kobe Bryant has been the top reserve scorer in the NBA and gaining res really rave notices at only age 19. Now, this is a tough matchup. You're going to see Ku coach along with Michael Jordan will be switching back and forth on a two and three Campbell on the screen and roll in the basket and a delay of the game warning called against uh, the Lakers yeah the referees will leave you alone if you dunk the ball hard everything is fine but as soon as you tap it away from uh, the inbounder then they'll call delay a game 21 percent shooting by the Lakers who had missed 11 in a row before that slam by Eldon Campbell great move by Jordan and he scores that was a classic Michael Jordan move going around he's got seven that was priceless absolutely priceless because he was triple team here is the screen and roll and it rolls off speaking of roll by Eldon Campbell he's slow getting back the Bulls showing a lot more energy than the younger swifter Lakers in the early going 19 to 9 Chicago Jordan great move inside and Michael Jordan teaching Eddie Jones a few things out there now, Eddie Jones is an excellent defender but you saw Michael gave him the entire repertoire the head fake the ball fake and a step through Dan Exel with a pretty nifty move himself tipped up and off by Robert Ory and I think with Kobe Bryant in town I think Michael Jordan had enough of an incentive Forget about Lakers Bulls. Two coach, or I should say Longley, from the corner wide open, and the Bulls out big 23 to 9. And finally, Nick Van Exel with a lay in. You can see right now, the Lakers, as much as they're struggling, anytime Chicago scores, they're pushing the ball quickly, and they are getting a shot off within three to four seconds. And Jordan is fouled by Eddie Jones. Lakers very impressive at getting it up after made baskets, but what a show early by Michael Jordan. Now you're going to see here, Michael got double team right there, and he comes back, and he puts it up with his left hand. And now just watch Michael. He gives you the head fake, ball fake, and as he comes through here, now there's your ball fake, step through. And because that step creates such a distance to the defender, he's up and in easy. Jordan leading the NBA in scoring at over 26 points a game. Eddie Jones picking up his second personal foul. Substitutions uh, coming in. Corey Blunt, a former Chicago Bull who played three years with the Bulls and has done the job off the glass for the Lakers has come in. Rick Fox re-enters the game and Kobe Bryant in there now along with Eldon Campbell and Nick Van Exel. Jordan with the free throws has 11 and the Bulls lead by 14. Main thing for the Lakers right now, just keep sticking with your main offense. Work, work through the inside game first, and then everything else will come a lot easier. Campbell, and again, Longley doing a good job bodying Eldon Campbell, and a technical yeah. foul has been called against Del Harris, maybe by design. Yeah, and no, not by design. He, he's hot. He's really hot, and I agree with him 100%, because Campbell was just mugged again. Now he in his last three offensive moves he's been fouled on all three and there's no way that you can work your offense when you work through your pivot people if they're going to allow all that contact to happen. Campbell in each attempt has gone to the referee on the baseline and said I've been fouled. Where is the call. Now you're going to see as they drop it in down here Luke Longley as he goes to the baseline is going to get him a drop step right. You see there it is there. He, he, he didn't get fouled. He got he got hammered. Okay. Good coach has it knocked away and it is still Chicago ball. So certainly not by design did Dell get that technical. Why well, I tell you Dick I think that's uh, the most overrated thing guys say hey, I took that one because I wanted to change the momentum of the team. Most guys when they get a technical foul call on them are shocked. Here's Kukoc and Rodman uh, does not give him a good pass going to the basket. So a turnover by the Bulls who lead 25 to 11. The Bulls have yet to make a substitution 
in this game. The Lakers have made several with 320 remaining in the first. See, right now, since Campbell can't get a call, you've got to go to other stuff. Your continuity, your down screens, your double screens, etc. And what about Van Exel? That's the second time he's been able to to lay it in unmolested. Well, see, Longley does not want to leave Campbell because he left Campbell twice at two dunks. Under three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Kukoc gets it into Jordan. Jordan already with 11 with a turnaround. And that time, Kobe Bryant did a good job on him. And a loose ball foul is the call against Dennis Rodman. For Rodman, his first. Now, Dennis is working very hard here this evening. And he, you have him averaging five offensive rebounds a game for the season. And you know Dennis is one of the best. Now, this is just a great move by Van Exel. See, Longley fakes, but once you make that commitment, you've got to go. Make him pass and then rotate back. story get the world's fastest sport utility vehicle introducing the grand cherokee 59 limited peterson's four-wheel and off-road magazines four by four of the year sony tunitron sony surround sound cool it's one of the many combinations that can make great things happen in your home Any way you put it together, it's maximum television. Only from Sony. May I take your order, please? A spicy chicken sandwich. Wendy's spicy chicken is made with Dave's own blend of pepper and spices. It has a spicy hit that'll warm you up. Yes? Whatever the weather. I'll have what he's having. Get ready to get creative. Get into a Rebel G. Go beyond snapshots. Experience the ultimate rush. Cool. Rebel G and only EOS lenses from Canon. Bulls by 12 and want to remind you coming up on Turner Sports Friday night on TNT. Allen Iverson and the Sixers host Tim Hardaway in the Miami Heat. 8 o'clock on TNT. Then the Celtics host the Charlotte Hornets next Tuesday on TNT. And Friday, a week from Friday, the Miami Heat go against the Detroit Pistons, also 8 o'clock on TNT. Pretty big schedule coming up. We'd like to show you a screen and roll with Van Exel with the ball and a screen by Campbell. Now watch as he comes off the screen. You'll see Luke Longley step out. Beautiful pass. And then Campbell just takes it down strong. And as a matter of fact, he even got hit on that shot. That should have been a three-point play. So when, when you look at the Los Angeles Lakers coaching staff, they have a right to be upset right now. The referee has definitely been a little inconsistent. Derek Fisher has come in for Nick Van Exel as Rick Fox misses a spin in the lane. Van Exel, the only one who is shooting. Two of them layups, three of five. The rest of the Lakers are two of 16 from the field. They are ice cold and trail by 12. The these Bulls still have not gone to the bench. Tony Kukoc with a baseline move and a three on two break for the Lakers. Kobe Bryant against Michael Jordan. Oh! And the rebound is taken away by Corey Blunt. And Rick Fox misses, and the Lakers not only missing from outside, they are not able to connect from under the basket. Rick Fox 0 for 5 as Luke Longley commits the personal foul. Now, this is just a, a you know, high percentage shot. He just leaves it short. And now you're going to see the banging in here. Great steal by Blunt. Took it away, but he misses the follow-up. As Fox goes up, he muscles it up there, but he leaves it short. Kobe Bryant shooting and hitting with Michael Jordan in his face. So Bryant getting his first points of the game. Remember, he only plays 26 minutes. He gets off 13 shots. He's shooting 42%, but he's definitely a highlight film. And we saw three of those highlights a week ago against the Golden State Warriors and Kobe Bryant at 19 goes for the fake and fouls Michael Jordan. Now keep this right here. This is a beautiful screen. So he leveled Michael off right there. Michael did not get his hand up. And if you don't get your hand up, you're neutralizing your size. 
Now right here you're going to see this is a good ball fake by Michael gets him up in the air. Now take your time and hope that you can shoot through it. Jordan coming off a 31 point effort against the Phoenix Suns on Monday as the Bulls starting to come alive playing their best ball as of late they beat the Toronto Raptors by 27 their widest margin of victory in their previous game so they feel they're getting it together now Jordan with 13 points and a 12 point Bulls lead. Well Dick any time that you take care of the defensive boards and you hold people down in shooting to the whole there it is. Couldn't hold him down. That's Kobe Bryant. That was a backdoor move by the numbers. Hit the post. Backdoor the guy from the wing. A little rumbling here at the United Center over that move by Kobe Bryant. Again, 19 years old at a Lowell Marion High School in Philadelphia in the second year. Harper gets his own rebound on the miss as we get close to one minute remaining in the first quarter. Well, you got to go inside. Luke's got to go down low. You got Fox on you now. No double team. And here he goes in, and that's what happened. He took advantage. The Bulls taking advantage of the mismatch, leading 29 to 17, under a minute remaining in the first quarter. Luke Longley has eight. That is second to Michael Jordan's 13. Here is Derek Fisher using a screen, and Rodman gets the rebound. That's eight. For Michael or Dennis Rodman off the board. Now you can look at this stick and say, hey, this is playoff contact being allowed here tonight. Or you can look at this and say, hey, the Lakers have got to grow up here now and say, you know what? This game's going to be physical, so you've got to raise your level, you know, to this type of competition. Rick Fox stepped on the line, and let's take a look again at Kobe Bryant. There's a backdoor move. They catch him right there, turning his head. Caught Michael turning his head. He thought he could regroup. But any time that a young guy goes airborne that fall now this is an offensive foul by Longley and you can say well he flopped well I want to tell you Longley is 7 to 295 and when he gets it to your chest like that you're only six foot six Rick Fox you don't have to be an actor to go down as Rick Fox did as the Bulls make their first substitutions of the game Steve Kerr and Judd Bushler come into the game Sean Rooks who has been effective off the bench as a rebounder who's come in for the Lakers two on the shot clock Jordan's going to have to take the shot he does at the buzzer no he didn't he didn't get it off in time and with 20.1 on the clock the Lakers can play for the last shot but they're down by 12 and they have been outplayed in the first quarter here right now Michael looks extra quick he really does now we know that last night the Lakers won a good game on the road in Minnesota last night flew down here but they were in the hotel before 1 a.m. so everything was fine they worked out not here uh, but they worked out in the hotel with their scouting report for tonight's game and of course this is a big game the second of the five game road trip and you're playing the world champs got There's one four with Kerr out on the top guarding Fisher seven on the shot clock you see the clock Fisher penetrating inside Derek Fisher with the basket and the foul Derek Fisher the backup point guard delivers in his second year from Arkansas Little Rock well they love him the coaching staff loves this guy this guy's a tough dude he was a player of the year uh, in his conference at Little Rock and I'll just watch the hit there's the first hit there's the second hit and he put it off the boards anytime you come down in that paint it's so much easier if you put the ball off the glass. And the three point play by Fisher, 4.6 seconds remain. And the pass to Ron Harper. He's got Kukoc. Kukoc gets it off, and he's fouled. And let's see if it was beyond the arc. And it'll be a two shot foul. Tony Kukoc with 1.6 will go to the line as Corey Blunt committing the personal foul. You're coaching the Lakers, Dick. You're exasperated. You're not happy with the way the game is being called. You don't like all the physical contact. But then again, your guys are fouling jump shooters. That's the third jump shooter that has been fouled. And you're saying, why are you doing that? Give me a time that you blocked a jump shot 18 to 20 feet from the basket. This is the mentality that Michael Jordan said teams have to learn before they can win a championship. Miss free throw and Longley tips it in. And that is the end of the quarter. So it ends up the way it started with the Chicago Bulls Michael Jordan 13 Luke Longley 10 as the Bulls with 57 percent shooting from the field lead the Los Angeles Lakers 32 to 20 after one.
tomorrow night on this superstation. It's what you love about Bond. Really? First at 8.05. Racist game. So, he really plays in them? Yeah. Mark Brunel in the Nike Air Marauder. Almost took him all the way last year. A scrambler like him needs some real tracks to make the plays he does. Terry Collins has the same shoes too, right? You bet. He took him right past San Fran and through Cowboy Country. <laughs> Nobody gets you closer to the game than Foot Locker, where it all begins. And welcome back to Chicago. This is our final NBA on TBS telecast before the holidays. So uh, we hope this one uh, turns out to be a good one. Uh, after the first quarter, the Bulls lead the Lakers 32 to 20. Well, Chicago shot 57 percent. The Lakers 29 in three point shooting. Chicago three for three. The Lakers one for five, and we know that's the Laker game. Free throws is a major key. Uh, the Lakers have only attempted three, Chicago seven. And then the battle of the boards being won in the early going by Chicago with a plus six. Mm. It's all right there. Michael Jordan starts the second quarter on the bench. Randy Brown, who suffered a sprained right ankle, a scare at the end of the game the other night against Phoenix is in. Now here comes your half-court trap. This is the first time that they've been in the half-court trap tonight. Main thing is, is to run time, get them out of their half-court set. Brown off the glass tip by Harper. Loose ball, two coach to Harper inside. And an acrobatic move by Ron Harper, who has seven points to start the second quarter. Anytime you have court trap, your guys are rotating. When the shot goes up, everybody must rebound. Sean Rooks playing center, and he's been good. He's a third stringer, plays maybe better than a lot of backups in the NBA at center. Kobe Bryant hitting a three from outside. He's got seven points and already a spectacular inside move. Well, that's part of his game, Dick. He attempts three. He hit that one. He's now 22 for 62. He's shooting about 35%. Tony Kukos driving in. And the rebound by Kobe Bryant. Lakers with Kobe Bryant and Derek Fisher, along with Eddie Jones, Robert Ory, and Sean Rooks. The ball out of bounds. Last touch by the Lakers. So the Bulls have Ron Harper out there with Randy Brown and Scott Burrell up front, along with Longley and Tony Kukoc. Longley had 10 in the first quarter. And Kukoc puts it up, but a foul away from the basket on the Lakers. Well, you see, that was a silly foul by Rooks. Because you know that the guy at the top of the circle in the triangle, when they throw into the post, is just going to move over to the wing. And that's all he was doing, and Rooks just smacked Kukoc. Bulls up by as many as 14, leading by 11 here early in the second. Here's Burrell trying to post up against Eddie Jones, and he burns it. Good move by Scott Burrell as the Jones try to deny. And the score now 36 to 23. Bulls very sharp in this first half. I want to send a message to the Lakers that it's uh, not your time yet. We'll meet again February 1st at the Forum. Fisher inside. Fall away by Kobe Bryant. Is there anything he can't do anywhere on the floor? Dick, that, that was such a difficult shot because he was moving. He caught it and threw a fadeaway without a dribble. Ron Harper is fouled, and they're going to call it on Eddie Jones. That may be his third. And instead, they say it's Kobe Bryant, his second. Now, see, he made that catch, and he was moving from the opposite corner. To make that catch fade away, be behind the board, come out in the air, and knock it down. Not that, facing the basket. That's right, that's right. Yeah, that, that was really a great move. I have a hunch we're going to see a lot more from Kobe Bryant before he's through. Oh, you, you really went out on a limb. <laughs> you really went out there, didn't you? I thought about that before I made that statement for a long time. <laughs> Four on the shot clock, Longley over Rooks, and Luke Longley with 12 points, coming off a sprained ankle, did not play in the last game, but Longley, six of eight from the field for the Bulls, who are up by 13. Well, that's why at the top of the show we made an issue of bringing out that Luke Longley is averaging right at 12 points a game. 
And you can see he's playing with a lot of confidence. And as a matter of fact, Rooks caught him right on the uh, wrist that time when he released that shot. But he feels that he can score. He's got a nice baby hook shot. He's got that fadeaway. And remember now, he's 7 2, long arms. Eldon Campbell checks in for Sean Rooks. And Nick Van Exel is in as well. So the starting backboard tandem of Eddie Jones and Nick Van Exel with the ball in there now for the Lakers. The best shooting three point tandem in the NBA easily. Luke pass in. Harper fouling Kobe Bryant. He tried to front him, but he uh, shoved him away, and Kobe is fouled. Yeah, Bryant just did a, a change of direction from the top of the circle. He's being overplayed by Harper, and when he went right down the middle, keep an eye to the right of your screen. You're going to see him come flying right into your picture right there. Uh, but Harper's doing a nice job on it. Bryant shooting over Harper misses. And the Bulls with Tony Kukoc bringing it up. Kukoc getting a chance to start now with Pippen out of there. He has uh, started 19-18 uh, now exactly. Longley with an old-fashioned hook shot. Here comes Van Exel pushing it up. Bulls back defensively, however. Under eight and a half to play, and there's the loop in, and that was a pass. <laughs> that was a pass. That was a pass. <laughs> I did. That, that was just a quick bit. He was looking for a quick, quick lob. To Ori, yeah. Right to Ori, right? And they're, and they're playing like it was a shot. The 11 point deficit now. Lakers behind. They'll take him down. Who take goes down. against Van Exel? Has the big edge. He knows it and scores against them. But the Bulls have taken advantage of their mismatches nearly every time down. They're seeing them and they're doing it, Dick. You're absolutely right. 40 to 27, and there is Eddie Jones slicing in for the basket. Eddie Jones coming off a 32-point effort against Minnesota, the November Player of the Month in the NBA. But on the other end, Kuko wide open end to end. We're seeing spectacular basketball from both sides. We're talking about the Laker quickness after a score, but the Bulls are also showing it to you. They've definitely upbeat this year more than at any other time. Now just keep it. There it is. That was a lob pass, and the thing went right through the hole. Beautiful. And on the turnover, the give and go. Randy Brown to Longley from Kukoc. That is a textbook play by the Bulls. Yeah, they caught them rotating. Beautiful movement. When your man leaves you to help on a guy, you go to the front of the rim. Timeout called by Del Harris. Excellent ball movement. Total unselfish play. Now there's your guard around situation. Now once Campbell moved, Longley stepped right up. Beautiful pass. And the biggest lead of the game for the Chicago Bulls. We'll be right back. Get the latest scores and highlights. Where? Cool stuff, huh? And comfortable. Introducing the Michael Jordan Collection from Haynes. You think I could dunk in these? Yeah, a donut, Roy. You could dunk a donut. From director Steven Spielberg, Siskel and Ebert give Amistad. Lini at the TBS studios. Quick update on the Cavs at the Hawks. The Cavs have won seven straight on the road, trying to cut into a two-and-a-half game lead. Atlanta holds in the central, but Sean Kemp rejected there by Dikembe. Not in his house. Hawks back the other way. Mookie feeding Leitner, who has 16 in the game to this point. Third quarter score, five minutes left. It's the Hawks with a seven-point advantage. Let's send you back to the United Center. Dick Stockton and Hubie Brown. We'd like to show you that last play. You're going to see the triangle offense right here. But if they don't go to the corner or the post, you'll see Ku coach flash, and the pass will come to the high post. Brown will come around and go to the basket. We call that a guard around play. Now you see, now right here, you'll see Campbell leave to take up there, and Luke Longley will step right to the rim, and you just have total unselfish play. What happened to give and go? That but, no, of, no, that, uh, no, that was a guard around. Give and go was for you when you played with your white tennis sneakers and your black socks and your little cut-off denims that I, your mommy had. I'm glad I asked you. <laughs> Down at the playground. Remember the last time I asked you? That was it. <laughs> Michael Jordan has been on the bench for five minutes, and the Bulls have increased their lead by three. Jordan getting a rest because this unit has done the job. Randy Brown and Ron Harper in the backcourt. Burrell, along with Kukoc and Longley, and the 24-second clock expires, and the woes continue for the men in purple and gold. Yeah, they just cannot establish their inside game. Campbell was all upset again. He's on the verge of a technical, okay? And, and like I've been saying all along, he has a right to be. 
Kobe Bryant, Robert Ory, Eddie Jones, Nick Van Exel, and Eldon Campbell on defense against the Bulls, who lead 44 to 29, and a foul called against uh, the Lakers. Yeah, they catch Bryant holding on to Brown as he was cutting right down in the lane. Right now, the Chicago Bulls with this unit on the floor are not running so much triangle. They're running a lot of what we call an open set. There's a lot of movement and a lot of passing. Kobe Bryant goes out with three personal fouls, and as he does, Michael Jordan comes back in. Rick Fox had replaced Kobe Bryant, who scored nine points while he was in there. Good ball movement by the Bulls, and it's reflected in 13 assists so far in this game with Kukoc getting five and Randy Brown three off the bench. He stays in there with Jordan. Here is Burrell firing over Rick Fox. Kukoc longly gets the loose ball. And there is Tony from three. And Fox going after it. And this time the foul is called against the Bulls with 626 remaining in the first half. That'll be the second on Luke Long. Yeah, it's about time. He was up over the top of the back there. But you see, this is one of the strengths of the Bulls. They shoot a low percentage, but they get 16 offensive rebounds, so they get more second shots. 20-point edge in the shooting percentage in this game as Ori misses from outside. And Ori tries to save it and does nicely. Plenty of time on the shot clock for the Lakers. No need for them to rush. Van Exel spinning his way in. Ball spins away, but Longley knocks it out of bounds, and it is still Lakers' ball. Lakers just need a little power surge here. Some tough defense. Get yourself a couple of quick baskets, and you're right back in this thing. The energy's there. The ball will just not fall. Six minutes remaining in the second quarter. Plenty of time, as you point out, Hubie. But the Lakers have scored only 29 points. They come in as the leading scoring team in the league. Randy Brown with a steal on the screen and roll pass from Van Exel. Brown goes around Van Exel, but the Bulls come up empty. That was a strong move. Van Exel will hit and miss from three. And once again, the Lakers getting it up there in a hurry. They are patient, as you pointed out. They can get back in this game. Here is Jordan for three. And Scott Burrell with the offensive rebound gets his own rebound again. It's blocked inside, and here's Van Exel ahead to Eddie Jones. Randy Brown defending, and an offensive foul is the call against Jones, and that may be his third. Now that, that it was is. a great, great defensive play by Randy Brown. He cut off Eddie Jones, and Eddie Jones elevated. He was not going to be denied. Now, just keep an eye on this. Now, watch Randy come see, right? He's coming right into your screen. Now, he takes that one, and if you notice, he protected himself by bringing his both arms up so that when Jones caught him, he came right into those two forearms. So, Eddie Jones has to go out of the game with three, and John Barry, who is uh, used sparingly by the Lakers, but a good extra guard to have on your team, former Atlanta Hawk checks in. Well, they like him because he comes in shooting, and he can score. Kukoc slapped away by Ori. Randy Brown playing inspired defense since uh, he has come in in the second quarter. And uh, offensively, he's coming off a season's high of 14 points in Monday's victory against Phoenix. Well, the Bulls bench coming alive. Here is Michael Jordan finally over Ori hits. Michael Jordan gets his first points of the second quarter, 15 in the game. Longley. Second with 14. Michael is quick. Everything about him is quick. He's prime. No question about it. As he is definitely inspired by facing the Lakers. Working against Rodman is Eldon Campbell with a fine baseline spin. See, he's got it all. He, he really does. He's got a nice hook. He's got a nice fadeaway jump shot. But then he has the up and under plus the power drop step move. Rodman playing the center position right now for the Bulls. Relatively smaller team out on the court. That's why you have to go through Campbell at the other end of the floor. Take advantage of the height uh, disadvantage that uh, Rodman has. Rodman slapped away by Rick Fox, and this will be an easy layup at the other end. So the ball was knocked away from Michael Jordan, and Rick Fox, struggling early, has two points in the game. 13-point lead, 
It was 17, and Phil Jackson and the Bulls call a timeout with 3.57 remaining in the first half, a 13-point bull lead. Now there's a nice strip by Fox and getting the ball out. Now, we, we're saying here this evening, the Lakers cannot get anything going in their half-court game. They're struggling in their three-point shooting, but the opportunities are there. You know the game. Now get inside it. Log on to NBA.com and reach every team and every player. Explore NBA news and notes. Visit the NBA store. Or chat with NBA players and coaches. Enter NBA.com arena and go courtside for live game audio broadcast and on-screen play-by-play. It's all here. The online world of the NBA. Go to the net. NBA.com. Go farther. Isuzu, builders of the completely reinvented 1998 Isuzu Rodeo. Isuzu, go farther. And by Red Lobster, where a slam dunk involves melted butter. Red Lobster, because life on land is dry. The Magnificent Mile during the Christmas season. A shopper's delight on Michigan Avenue here in Chicago where the Bulls lead the Lakers 46 to 33. Tomorrow on TBS, Timothy Dalton stars as James Bond in The Living Daylights, part of 13 days of 007. Tomorrow night, beginning at 8.05 Eastern, only on the Superstation. That's Bond, James Bond. You like that? I do. <laughs> Steve Kerr. Three-point uh, shooting expert has checked into the game, so a three-guard offense in effect. Bill Wennington making his first appearance. See, they start out with a little motion, a little weave, and then they come right back into the triangle. Wennington deflected by Eldon Campbell. The follow-up by Jordan misses, and here's Rick Fox with three and a half to go in the first half. Now, in this first half, the Lakers are really struggling with their threes. They're only two for eight. 13-point lead, Nick Van Exel for three, and way off the mark. Van Exel struggling from three-point range in the early going. Now Steve Kerr is out with a bruised kneecap. He's missed 10 games. And Bill Weddington also uh, was injured. He had a tendonitis in the right elbow. Came off the uh, injured list this six games. So the injured getting healthy. Wennington blocked again by Campbell, and the 24-second clock expires. So Wennington can't get much elevation, and Campbell has been right in his face twice. Two key subs during the championship years have been Wennington and Kerr. Because they come in, they keep the center honest because Wennington takes them high, and then Steve Kerr just spots off for everything of penetration of Jordan, and then the forgotten man, Scotty Pippen. Maybe not forgotten, but not for long. Not for long. Eldon Campbell, basket and a foul. So far, the Bulls have kept the Lakers at bay. The Lakers had 20 points in the first half, only 15 so far in the second quarter, I should say. Well, you can see. I mean, this guy's giving you a lot of different moves. I see he comes in, and it, oh, he just, he, he, he really nailed Wennington with that right elbow. Caught Wennington right in the ribs. Eldon Campbell with a three-point play, and it is now a 10-point game. The Lakers have scored seven straight points. The thing right now, you know, you, you can't have 107 points a game in a 10-point differential if you don't play hard for 48 minutes. Jordan with a move to the baseline and a foul against Rick Fox. Jordan will go to the free throw line, and Fox with his first foul. That is the fourth team foul against uh, the Lakers. Bulls also have four. Join host Vince Cellini and Cheryl Miller at the conclusion of the first half for the Nike Halftime Report. Scores and highlights from the night as well as any other news from around the league coming up on the Nike Halftime Report. Michael Jordan. There is uh, Eddie Jones and Kobe Bryant on the bench discussing things. Uh, Jones with three and Bryant with three personals. Now you can see some imposing stats there by Michael. During the course of the season, Michael gets to the line nine foul shot attempts a game. But throughout his career, an 84% free throw shooter. This year, only 76%. Six of seven tonight at the line, so uh, he has been sharp 
on the stripe en route to his 17 points. John Barry is fouled by Steve Kerr. That is his second and the 15th foul against the Bulls. You have to pay attention to John Barry because he comes in, he loves to shoot threes, they give him the green light. He can put the ball on the floor and take you to the basket. Plus, he's an excellent passer in traffic. Bill Harris likes his talent, and they're, they're looking down the road at him because they'd like him to be able to play the point guard also. As you can see, playing a little more than eight minutes a game in a team loaded with the backcourt players. Well, they're happy with Van Exel and then Derek Fisher as the backup at the point. But in case of an injury, you always want to have that third guy. Lead is down to 10 once again as the Lakers trap. Here's Dennis Rodman with a pass to Wennington. And Wennington is fouled. Eldon Campbell upset with that uh, call. He thought he had the ball instead of the man. And Campbell picking up his first. And well, both teams at five fouls. Dick, the ball movement by the Bulls was excellent. And this is just a strong move. And that's the way to take it to the basket. Take it with two hands. Send it down strong. Campbell, an excellent shot blocker. He gets two a game definitely hit him on that shot. Well, it's interesting, Hubie, despite the 10-1 record here at home, Phil Jackson didn't think that the Bulls were playing that well, even though they were winning at home. So for the first time, he held a practice yesterday at the United Center. Normally, they are out at Deerfield, but they were at the United Center practicing on this court yesterday. Dick, they're shooting 43% from the field. That's 23rd in the league. 30% in threes and only 68% on the line. Jordan is fouled. And we talk about the free throw shooting. They are 27 out of 29 teams in the NBA on free throw. Yeah, so he, he's bringing him in here and saying, look, uh, uh, I'm not going to tell you that my triangle offense is not working. What I'm telling you is, is that we're getting you good shots, and you players are missing the shots, plus you are missing the foul shots. Jordan makes the first free throw. Michael Jordan this season versus his career. Well, you can see he's six points down from his career, but how about the field goal percentage? He's nine down from his career average. The field goal attempts are the same, so it's not that. So it's the foul shooting is down, and then his field goal percentage is down. Tonight so far, Michael Jordan, 19 points, eight of nine from the line. He's already gone to the line nine times, and we have 148 remaining in the first half. Campbell, turnaround over Wennington. Ori tips it out. Eldon Campbell again with a short baseline shot. And Dennis Rodman with his 10th rebound of the game. Again, the Lakers with opportunities inside. Jordan off the rim and out of bounds. It'll be Lakers ball with 129 on the clock. Now, we might have seen a first because that is his second air ball. Tell Marty Aronoff, come on, we need a, a stat here. Jordan, that's his air second ball? air ball in a half. Well, that's that's the first time air I, I've ever seen. <laughs> okay. That's why they call him Air Jordan. No, that's Air Jordan. Oh, okay. That's well, air I wasn't Jordan. sure exactly what. He just came in from the mezzanine oh, okay. to get that rebound. That was an air ball. Thought it might have skimmed off the front rim, which I'll always give him the benefit <laughs> of the doubt, as you know. Jordan working against Fox. Ten on the shot clock, getting down to a minute to go in a half. Wennington popping over Ori Hicks. Bill Wennington, that's what he does best. And he gives the Bulls a 53-38 lead. Yeah, see, he takes your center away from the basket, and he, he he's uh, usually a high percentage shooter. He just has to get back in shape. Same thing with Kerr. Well, the Bulls again up by 15 points with under a minute remaining, and 10 on the shot clock for the Lakers. Got it down to 10, and now it again a 15-point lead. Double team on Ori with one second, and the clock runs out before Campbell could get up and lay it in. That's the kind of half it has been. It's Bad been clock management. Yet, and very frustrating for Del Harris, for Elton Campbell, and for Ori. Ori did a great thing. Anytime you're double team, take the guys away from the basket. He did, and he opened up the area for Elton Campbell. Unfortunately, he didn't throw a lob to the front of the rim. So the Lakers woes with 35% shooting from the field and seven turnovers. You do that against the defending world champs on their floor, you're going to be behind by double digits. Jordan is fouled, and that'll be Rick Fox with his second, and Michael again will go to the line. So he'll be at the stripes doubled digits in the first half. Well, you know he's at the top of his game anytime that he gets over 10 foul shot attempts. He's making things happen tonight. I, I'm, I'm just uh, impressed with his quickness because we had him earlier this season where he was nowhere uh, as quick as he is this evening. Revved up going against the Laker team. 
Lakers getting a lot of play in the NBA as a team that could possibly unseat the Bulls who've been playing without Pippen Lakers without Shaq and I think uh, the Bulls will have something to say and they're saying something already in this game leading 55 38 matching their biggest margin playing for the final shot for all intents and purposes of this first half Nick Van Exel guarded by Randy Brown five on the clock Kerr not giving Barry any kind of a look and fouls him and that'll be three free throws coming up and Kerr is upset with himself well, yeah, Barry when he came up down from the middle of the lane you know they set that up they set a screen for him he came right up the middle of the lane he was looking for the three uh, right from the catch and then it, as he went with the ball fake he catches Kerr up Kerr catches him with his hip hip to hip there third personal foul on Steve Kerr the Lakers uh, have been without Eddie Jones their leading scorer with Shaq out of action he has three and Kobe Bryant who scored nine points in spectacular fashion off the bench also with three Judd Bushler coming in for the final 4.5 and uh, Bill Wennington leads. right now what the Bulls are doing is they're going with all their three point guys and then they'll have Rodman as, as the inbound but they'll push quickly and they're looking for you to get in a tough matchup they got 4.5 seconds just plenty of time here's Michael Jordan he's got the catch and he's got Bushler for the layup underneath as the Lakers fall asleep defensively 1.9 remaining Rick Fox fires it up and misses as the Chicago Bulls hold the top scoring team in the NBA to only 41 points as the Bulls starters seeing a lot of action have 50 with Michael Jordan leading the way with 21. Now, now just watch the uh, three shirts go right for Michael and leave Bushler underneath wide open. And that is the end of the first half here at the United Center where the Chicago Bulls all over the L.A. Lakers to the tune of 57 to 41. Inside Stuff, Saturdays on NBC. At PlayStation Athletic Department. So Michael Jordan with things in hand at the half. 21 points after two quarters for Michael and a 16-point lead for the Chicago Bulls over the Lakers. We welcome you to the Nike Halftime Report where all the highlights are handcrafted. That's our promise to you. <laughs> I'm Vince Cellini. She's Cheryl Miller. Let's get right to it with some highlights. And watching the Cleveland Cavaliers play last season was like watching John Tesh and Kenny G in a battle of the bands. I mean, this was torture, but an influx of rookie talent and the high-flying Sean Kemp has made for pleasing up-tempo play for Cleveland and a recent 10-game win streak. The retooled Cavs in Atlanta challenging the Hawks and the top record in the East Eastern Conference. We go to the Georgia Dome now. Lenny Wilkins, the former Cavs coach, facing Mike Fratello, the former Hawks coach. And look at the ball movement here, Cheryl. You don't see this anymore, but that's why they lead the East with the records. Good ball movement by the Hawks. And then Steve Smith with the finish. The Hawks with a 10 point lead in the first. Second quarter, Smith to Christian Leitner. And Leitner, ball on the floor and then to the basket, going in strong. Hawks had a two-point lead at that point. Third quarter now, Sean Kemp racing over to Kemba. Oh, Sean, a little bit of range there. Knocking that one down. The Cavs had a two-point advantage at that point now, but we fast forward you to five and a half minutes left, a little more than that, and now the Atlanta Hawks have pushed it out to a 12-point lead. Cleveland had won seven straight on the road. Atlanta looking for their fourth straight win. Another solid game tonight. Heat at the Wizards, MCI Center. Zoe back in D.C. and back in uniform. After the surgery on the left knee, didn't waste time getting a shot. Knocks down that jumper over Terry Davis. Wizards, though, 21 to 8. Wizards just dominating this game. Weber, backdoor pass to a cutting Cal Cheney for the layup. 44 27 Wizards. And Rod Strickland with the strip of Timmy Hardaway and gets the easy lay in. Hardaway was scoreless through three quarters of play. Believe that. Then Morning and Davis get tangled up. Both picked up technicals there. A little frustration, but a little happiness for the Wizards. 88-74. That is a final. Strickland had 21 in the game. Morning returns with 24, but not enough. And now the Wizards 6-0 in their new arena, the MCI Center. Milwaukee, Charlotte. 
Fourth quarter, eight and a half minutes left. Charlotte with a three-point lead over the Bucks. The Hornets have won their last four. The Bucks have lost three in a row. Detroit beaten in New York Tuesday night. Now at the Nets, and it's New Jersey, 87-78 with 6.35 to go there. Grand Hill with 12. Keith Van Horn continues to impress 19 so far in that game. The Wizards mm -hmm. at home, perfect. A little flawed on the road. What's with that? It's really a Jekyll and Hyde team on and on the road. But I'll tell you one thing. When you had Ross Strickland scoring 21 points tonight, you have Jawan Howard, and then you have C. Webb playing. Well, when those three guys are on, and then you throw in Caliber Chain, he was much more relaxed offensively when he's at home. This team is truly hard to beat, which they're showing at the new MCI Arena. But a nice plus, I think, for the Heat to get Zoe back in there and playing well. It was nice, but not enough. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> the Nike halftime report goes away. Then we return with Hoop. In the heartland, the Knicks go bird hunting. New York stepping up against Indiana. Somebody was going to win their fourth in a row. Patrick and company hoping that somebody wore the dark jerseys. What are you guys doing? What are you doing? Hey, you know, the only time you guys yell box out is when you're out of donuts. You guys remind me of my shoe closet. I got one penny and a bunch of loafers. Yeah, I broke it snowboarding, and the bad thing is, it's my bell ringing arm. Mm. Well, let's see. You'll need something light and portable with a good clear sound. This model should do the trick. Would you be interested in looking at a car stereo? You know, for the sleigh? You'll find hundreds of great gifts at Circuit City's holiday sale, all at guaranteed low prices. Like this Sanyo CD boombox, just $59.99. Now at Circuit City. And we welcome you back to the Nike Halftime Report. Tuesday night, the Knicks strong-armed the visiting Pistons using a combination of solid defense and a big dose of Patrick Ewing to win their third in a row. The night after, New York at Indiana facing a Pacer team, also winners of three straight, trying to end the torment at the hands of the Knickerbockers. We go to Market Square Arena now, which turned out to be a very good game, and a tight game. Fred Hoiberg beats the shot clock buzzer for three, and then Patrick working on Smiths. Turns on him and raises and knocks it down. 75-69 Pacers in the fourth. Patrick Ewing with a miss. Mark Jackson with a basketball. Take it, Cheryl. Oh, oh, all the way down the court. Now watch this. Splits the defense. Go up. Can we see the shake? Oh, poor Jeff Van Gundy. Not real happy about that. That was Van Gundy's shake. Indiana 87-80. Ewing with 23. 11 rebounds. Smiths 18 and 7. Pacers win their fourth straight. The Knicks have now lost six straight on the road. As we take a look at Indiana now, Cheryl, close to home, yes. close to family yes. for you. Talk about the bird influence on mm -hmm. this team. Well, you know, last season this was an Indiana team that once the starters stepped on, they hoped that they could score enough points to cushion their lead so that when the second unit came in and it got squandered it, that they would still have some points. That is not the case this season. Larry Bird has done an excellent job of really instilling a lot of confidence in the second unit. Guys like Travis Best, Jalen Roy's, uh, Rose, Fred Hoiberg has been shooting extremely well. Then you had Antonio Davis and then Mark Pope, who's been non-existent, has played extremely well for this 
uh, Indiana team. Why has he been able to find a spot for Jalen Rose, a productive area for him? You know, Larry came in and he just basically analyzed Jalen's game. First of all, you have a big two guard who has po uh, point guard abilities. You have a guy that can shoot the three point shot and now can post up. All he had to do was really work on his mid range game. He's done that and it's still a lot of confidence in Jalen Rose and it's paid off in big dividends. Yeah, proofs in the pudding. No doubt about that. Back to the scores. The Timberwolves pounded at home by the Lakers a night ago. Losers of 10 of 13 at Philadelphia and look at the Sixers 85 77 mm. Allen Iverson with 21 in this game our Brian Burwell is a PS to this game saying the Pistons are hot after Jerry Stackhouse could pull the trigger on a trade maybe that'll happen soon we'll keep you posted back to the lost world Toronto the Raptors seeking their first home win in 43 days they're hosting Boston look at Boston move the basketball around McCarty for three yes knocks that one down and that gave some cushion for the green Thank you, Knott. 87-83 now, 11 ticks left. Raptors looking to fall to 2-22. Mm. A night of the Grizzly, Vancouver at San Antonio, tied at 47 late in the first half. Abdul Rahim, you see his numbers, and Elliott for San Antonio. Later tonight, after the Lakers and the Bulls, it's inside the NBA. I'll be here along with Cheryl for scores and highlights and league news and a special feature on Laker point guard Nick Van Exel He's been a pretty good guy. He's been almost St. Nick this year. His story after the game. Lakers in Chicago at the break. 16-point lead for the Bulls. We'll be right back on the Nike Halftime Report in a moment. At True Value, we've got all the decorations and gifts you'll need to get your home ready for the holidays. Anything else that might help? Santa! This four-piece ratcheting gear wrench set makes a great gift at only $21.88. True value. It's Christmas and help is just around the corner. If you're feeling a slight chill, break away for a warm holiday feast. The ultimate feast at Red Lobster. Succulent lobster tail, sizzling shrimp, steaming snow crab, and on top of it all, free dessert. It's our warmest offer of the season. Don't miss the ultimate feast with free dessert for a few weeks only at Red Lobster. Quickie from Sky Dome, it is a final. Boston a winner over Toronto, 88-83. Antoine Walker, nice night again with 18. The kid, Tracy McGrady, stepped up with 17 for a career high, but not enough. A look ahead on the Turner schedule, Friday night on TNT, 8 p.m. Eastern, the Heat at Philadelphia. Hardaway versus Iverson, somebody's gonna get crossed over Hi. in that game. Next Tuesday, Charlotte Hornets at Boston, and Friday again, it's Miami on TNT, hit the road to Detroit, all games followed by Inside. One way to keep up on news and stats from around the league, CNNSI.com, a website that knows no boundaries. Check it out, click on, and go crazy. From the United Center, the Bulls trying to work their way to 11-1 and one at home. At the break, Bulls have this one in hand. We'll see what happens in the second half in a moment. If you're going to create electricity, Use it. The Seiko Kinetic Watch. Electrically charged every time you move your body. You know, working at AutoZone is more than just looking up parts or ringing up sales. Most of all, it's listening. Because my customers know more about their cars than I'll ever know. They know every rattle by heart. I mean, that car is their baby. So when they got a problem they're going to fix themselves, I'm gonna do my best to help them get whatever they need, no matter what it takes. Because people like that, they don't deserve anything less than the best I can give them. Are you looking for that red hot gift this holiday? That gift that's hotter than hot, the one on everyone's list? Then come to Wendy's and get a spicy chicken sandwich. It's very hot. And why are you there? Say hello to Dave. Lad, is it still the holidays? Yeah, where you been, pal? I'm not too late. I can still get presents, but where? Office Max. They've got loads of great gifts. Attachés, pens, software. Intelligent, lad. At guaranteed low prices, so you don't waste time shopping around. Delightful, lad. Hurry to Office Max and start my shopping. 
Couldn't we just charge it? Office Max, we go to the max for you. You got a 10,000 acre fire and it's breathing right down your throat. So let's go! Faster, faster! Just a routine day of training. Not quite that fast. For America's most elite firefighters, Woo! but for their leader. It was a prison break! Take me down. This time, the enemy is not nature. Kill him. How we are. Why don't we see if you're still not a flyer? Firestorm, rated R. January 9th, only in theaters. This program is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the National Basketball Association. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the National Basketball Association is prohibited. Welcome back to the NBA on TBS here at the United Center in Chicago. The Bulls playing a textbook game, putting on a clinic and leading the L.A. Lakers 57 to 41 at halftime. And uh, the statistics uh, back up what the Bulls have done. They are shooting 49 percent to 34 for the Lakers. Luke Longley already exceeding his season's average in scoring and rebounds. Eddie Jones with personal foul problems. He's got three only two the rebounding story and we have to go to the back to the top Hubie when you said that the way to play the L.A. Lakers is to keep them in a half court game and that is precisely what the Chicago Bulls have done tonight. Well the main thing there Dick is that you cannot give them turnovers so they get out in the open floor Four turnovers for Chicago any time that Chicago shoots they're missing 12 offensive rebounds they cannot get out in fast breaks you keep them in a half court game now they struggle their first unit. 10 for 35 shooting 28 percent plus two for 10 in threes they can't get it done but the shots are there it could be a great second half here it all adds up to a Bulls lead but the Lakers have the explosiveness to come back and speaking of explosiveness oh. what about Michael Jordan in yes. the first half well this guy right now he just looked at us and said so much for my uh, index finger that's dislocated that was a three beautiful head fake right there and this is just a strong move finishing with that good left hand. This is what we mean by his quickness. He's been quick all night. The head fake and then the up and under step through. Michael on his way to a big 21. And he's gone on the line 11 times and has made 10 of them. Always an indication that he is on his game. And right now let's check in with Brian Burwell. Thank, thank you Dick. Now that 41 points for the Lakers ties their season low for the half. And Del Harris said the thing that bothers him is they're not getting out and playing their game, which is up tempo, but also they don't have the good sense when the up tempo, when the fast break isn't there, to work around and get some good shots in the half court set. And he says they just have to work on that a little bit better in the second half. Back to you guys at the table. All right, the scoring leaders for the Lakers, Eldon Campbell with 11, but he hasn't done the job off the glass. Nick Van Exel, 9, Kobe Bryant, 9, and John Barry, 5. Bryant and Eddie Jones, each with three personal fouls. For the Bulls, Michael with 21, Luke Longley with 14, Tony Kukoc, 8, Ron Harper, 7. A lot more, it looks like, than three men in double figures when this one is over for Chicago. Dick, uh, very astute observation there. And then also, let's see if Ori and Fox will come to life. Right now, they are one for nine from the floor, and they are getting hammered on their defensive glass. They cannot block the people off the board. So we get underway in the second half. Luke Longley with the Tony Kukoc and Dennis Rodman up front in the backcourt. Michael Jordan and Ron Harper. All the pressing tonight by the Lakers. Very soft and no hard traps on the pass. Rodman to Longley who lays it in. Again, great ball movement by the Bulls. And it is interesting because everyone underestimates the passing ability of Dennis Rodman. Very intelligent player, and when he makes the pass, he puts it right on the money. Eddie Jones playing with three fouls, misses a three, and who coached the rebound? So it's Jones, an excellent guard, and up front, Elgin Campbell the center with Rick Fox and Robert Ory the forward. If you're going to come out trapping early, you've got to make it happen. You've got to get the turnovers. You can't give them this. And a good defensive play. Ori slaps the ball away from Luke Longley. Lakers trying to make a run. They have made one run. They were down by 17, cut it to 10 before the Bulls open it up again in the second quarter. Eldon Campbell, baseline slam, and 13 now for the Lakers center. Well, Fox could have forced that shot. I like the way he gave it up. Campbell sent it down strong. 
They're in like a 2-2-1. Two, two, Three-quarter court trap, but it's soft. Now, once you get it over, they match up man-to-man. -man. And against the veteran team with older legs, you want to make them work more, and that's what the Lakers are trying to do. Luke Longley, however, pops out and has another basket. He has two hoops here in the third quarter. Fox guarded by Kukoc with 10 on the shot clock. Again, it's Eldon Campbell, and he's pushed. Well, you know, if I'm Luke Longley, I, you know what I like? He's complaining. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, I mean, he almost put that forearm right through his back. I keep an eye down inside. I just watched the forearm go right into Elton Campbell. I just watch it. Once he goes by, as he steps up, bam. <laughs> so that'll be three personals on Luke Longley. With uh, less than two minutes gone by here in the second half. Dick Stockton, UB Brown, Brian Burwell with you. Eldon Campbell with his second basket of this third quarter. See, Dick, keep going to Campbell. Try to get Longley on that fourth and get him out of there because they become smaller when they go to Winnington. And when you trap, it's a cumulative effect if you're going to wear a team down. You may not get the turnover right away, but you could wear down a veteran team. Here's Ron Harper missing a three. Campbell slaps it down. Loose ball, and Harper winds up with it, and Van Exel saves a basket. It was going to go to Longley for the lay-in, but Nick Van Exel was alert. Up until this point, the Lakers are half a step behind all night. Uh, Chicago's been extremely quick getting most of the loose balls. Here is Longley guarded by Campbell out to Harper. Here's Jordan around the screen. Michael Jordan misses his first shot of the second half, but Dennis Rodman saves it. That is 11 rebounds for Dennis, and yet another offensive rebound by the Bulls. Great pass, Jordan from Kukoc, and the Bulls extend their lead. Yeah, they're going for a 20-second timeout right now. Good call by Dell. And what's the main reason for the timeout? Two second shot opportunities. The Bulls score on both of them. They're getting out hustled right now. You don't see that enthusiasm. They've like taken the heart out of them. But as a coach, what you're trying to do is to get them going. Nice pass here by Kukoc. A great pass and a beautiful finish by Michael. Kukoc with seven assists and he is playing the all-round game that the Bulls want from him. He's gotten enough rebounds in the game and has scored. He has three rebounds. So Tony Kukoc who always said he wanted to start. Doesn't, of course, with Pippen, but getting his opportunity and making the most of it now. Well, Dick, you're looking at a guy who's playing 31 minutes. He's first on the team in field goal percentage at 48%. No one else over 45. He first in threes at three-point percentage at 48. And he leads the team in assists at 4.4 assists a game. And when that man comes off, in January, from the injured list, Kukoc will be, again, the valuable sixth man that the Bulls have used to win a flurry of titles. 63 to 45, the Bulls lead. Rick Fox with a great feed inside to Campbell. And out of bounds, traveling is the call against Eldon Campbell. Right now, once again, the underlying Orion Fox. They've got to get involved here offensively and do a better job on the defensive board. And here's Kukoc again. Tony Kukoc with 10 points. And speaking of Orion Fox, they have a combined two points between them. One for nine shooting. Three and a half minutes have elapsed here in the third quarter. Crowd just sitting back enjoying this one as the Lakers have never really challenged the Bulls in this one as Van Exel fires up an air ball. Rodman goes back to Kukoc. Bulls are making it look easy so far in this game. Michael Jordan with a spin move in the lane. He's got 25. And they're in cruise control right now. They're playing with a terrific amount of confidence. Everything is their tempo. Robert Ory misses a three-point attempt. And the rebound by Tony Kukoc. The Chicago Bulls trying to extend their winning streak to three games and a Bulls foul underneath. Now you know when Luke Longley outruns you, you know that you're in a lot of trouble here. Now keep an eye on Dennis as he picks it back and then Kukoc gets it over to Michael. Now Michael will come down in here, come back out with a beautiful spin move. 
It is a Laker foul, and it is on Eldon Campbell, his second. Michael Jordan, despite the dislocated index finger, which affected his shooting, a lot of players would like to be affected by the finger the way it's affected Michael Jordan tonight. He has 25 points, and he is a 7 of 14 from the line. Kobe Bryant has come back in the game for the Lakers. He, too, playing with the burden of three personal fouls. So Jones and Bryant, and what is Del Harris going to wait for? Might as well get him in. Oh, absolutely. Get him in the game, and don't worry about the fouls. It doesn't make a bit of difference. You're getting hammered here this evening, mainly because your front court people can't get anything done, and you can't take care of the board. So they're going small. Sean Rooks. And finally, Eddie Jones winds up with it. A 24-point lead by the Chicago Bulls. Unexpected uh, route by the Bulls to this point. Eddie Jones misses and Sean Rooks follows. Well, Sean Rooks throughout his career, you know, averages right at 10 points a game. He's very deceiving. He can shoot a high percentage. He does not have quick feet. So anytime he picks you up down inside, just take him strong to the rim. Tony Kukoc misses from three and a rebound by Ori. Not a bad third center to have on your team. Absolutely not, Dick. Plus, he can play a power forward for you, and you can play two big guys if, when you get to playoff time in the matchups are there. Kobe Bryant is guarded by Michael Jordan, and the fall away by Kobe Bryant. That's the future, and even Michael Jordan will tell you that Kobe Bryant, the future of the NBA, you're looking at the present and the future right there. It is 69 to 49, a 20-point Bulls lead. Michael was all over him that time, right in the space. And Jordan with a move to the basket. We got a little show going on here between number 23 and number 8. You kind of feel it, don't you? Yeah, you do. <laughs> and the crowd does as well. You know, Kobe Bryant's 19 at the same age. Michael Jordan was a sophomore at the University of North Carolina. And Bryant missing from outside. And the rebound by Dennis Rodman. Rodman has been a workhorse tonight, doing a terrific job. Jordan working against Bryant. Double team on Michael. Again, they double him. Four on the shot clock. Here is Rodman with one, gets it off. Air ball, and it'll go over to the Lakers. 71 to 49. Lakers never really in this game. They took a 5 0 lead, and that was it for them. Kobe Bryant fouled by Jordan, and he'll go to the line. This replay of Kobe, you see he's coming off a baseline screen. And then, now watch Michael. My, Michael's right on him now. Now this is just a quick move. Michael's right up in his face. Nothing but net. At the other end, Michael says, look, I'm turning on him and I'm taking him. Head fake, take him strong. And a timeout with 529 remaining in the third. What if it were me? What if things were different? If I weren't healthy? Or if I never got the opportunity? What if my mother didn't teach me to take time and give back? These are the things I ask myself. The things that help me keep it real. Volunteer to improve your community. Team up. In a GMC Yukon, every day, something to look forward to. Uh, looks like a little snow today. With the most horsepower in its class and auto track four-wheel drive, Yukon may change the way you feel behind the wheel. <laughs> yeah! Yukon by GMC. It puts you comfortably in command. You guys yell box out is when you're out of donut. You guys remind me of my shoe closet. One penny and a bunch of loot.
Here at the TBS studios, an update from the city of Atlanta. Hawks and the Cavs and Steve Smith taking this game over in the second half. Look at the rainbow over Cedric Henderson. Part of 23 points on the night for Smith. Atlanta winning 94-83 over their Central Division rival. Atlanta now a conference best 19-5. and We go back to the United Center. Dick and Hubie. All right, Vince, thank you very much. The Atlanta Hawks now tied with the Seattle Sonics for the best record in the NBA in a very tight battle in the Central Division all the way down to the fifth slot where the Chicago Bulls are. So Kobe Bryant will be going to the free throw line, scoring 27 against Houston Friday. He was scoreless with two and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter and scored all 27 points in under 13 minutes. Well he backed that up Dick in the next game with 14 in the fourth period. See there, there's more to this young man's game than just scoring because in 26 minutes a game he gives you four rebounds as well as three assists and he gets you one and a half steals a game. He gives you stats that a lot of starters give you in 32 to 34 minutes. There's the comparison between Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan thus far. And of course, remember, Kobe comes off the bench. One out of two from the line. It's a 21-point Chicago lead. Well, they're going to their quickness right now. And, you know, they had their trap. Once they give you the one trap, then they match up. Tony Kukoc laying it in. Kukoc with a big game. He has 12 points, eight assists, and four rebounds. Fine all-round effort by Tony Kukoc. Eddie Jones now guarded goes right around Kukoc and is fouled. Good quickness by Eddie Jones who hampered by foul trouble has scored only two points tonight. That's just a, a very quick move here by Eddie Jones. He's a, a, an excellent slasher and he loves to take it strong to the basket. Tonight there's been a good thing of strategy Dick. Any time that Chicago has gotten a major mismatch just like the last field goal. Rooks picked up. Tony Kukoc. Kukoc right off the dribble right to the rim. Well Michael Jordan with his third foul and Eddie Jones who was the player of the month in November now back in the swing after a slight dip. He scored 32 against Minnesota last night and uh, tonight because of foul trouble not doing much only one of seven from the field three points for Eddie Jones. Under five minutes remaining in the third quarter, 73-51, the Bulls, Dennis Rodman fouled, and he'll shoot two. Well, you can see what the strategy is right now. The Bulls are coming down the floor. They're spreading out. They have three guys right across the half court, two guys outside of the lane, and they're saying, right now, we are going to take advantage of your bad matchup, and your bad matchup is whoever Rooks is playing, and that's the guy they take off the dribble. They force you to rotate, and they find the free guy. Dennis Rodman scoreless against the Phoenix Suns but 21 rebounds in their last game. Gets his first point and gets a, a cheer from the crowd. So he will not get shut out again tonight. Well, the big thing is he came into this game and was shooting 36 percent. And you know Dennis usually does a halfway decent job on his foul sets. He's usually somewhere in the 50s. Lead is 13, 23, I should say. 13. We have the Lakers excited. Corey Blunt feeding. Eddie Jones getting the assist, and it is 74 to 53. Four and a half to go here in the third quarter. Randy Brown in there, along with Ron Harper, guard. Michael Jordan, in effect, the third guard with Kim Coach and Dennis Rodman. Michael Jordan, rebound Van Exel. Lakers. Highest scoring team in the NBA, but not tonight as Nick Van Exel now in double figure. Well, you're looking at a starting unit that is so high powered, five guys in double figures. And tonight they just cannot throw it in the ocean. They're still shooting below 30% as a unit. Well, this game, uh, Billy Build is a fine offensive team against one of the top defensive teams in the league. And the D is winning. Randy Brown misses the jumper. Yes, and uh, you say, hey, that's why you can see teams only shoot 41% for the game against Chicago. Second best in the league. Van Exel from Rooks to Corey Blunt, and that is the best ball movement we've seen from the Lakers tonight. 
Well, with this unit, everything is off the dribble unless they go to Rooks and on an occasional post-up. What they're trying to do is take you off the dribble, force you to double, find the free people. Randy Brown with a personal foul. And here is Corey Blunt, who has done a great job off the glass. Friday night, the Philadelphia 76ers and Allen Iverson against the Miami Heat on TNT next Tuesday. Hubie and I will be at the Fleet Center as the Hornets and Celtics go out of Dave Collins coaching against his former team with Patino doing a great job. Boston one game under 500. Heat and Pistons next Friday. So we'll feature a little bit of the Heat. There's Eldon Campbell on the bench with 15 right now. 18 point Bulls lead as we have less than three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Jordan guarded by Kobe Bryant. See what he does against the youngster. Off balance. Missed the tip. Rodman almost tipped it in. And here come the Lakers. Kobe Bryant going oh, to the hoop. Kobe Bryant, whose father, Joe Jellybean Bryant, played in the NBA. So he was well schooled in this league when he came aboard. Dick, he was behind the three point line on the catch. One bounce, and he was up and in the rim. You remember a few guys that did this initially? Oh, come on. Well, the guy right now with the basketball, he's not bad at it still as an old time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and Kobe Bryant blocking Randy Brown into the hands of Nick Van Exel. You have to be careful here now. You give him one. Van Exel misses. And Rodman the rebound. Kobe Bryant, though, has scored 14 points in 16 minutes. So you get an example of how he could score in a hurry. A blocking foul is the call as Kukos going to the hoop. Well, they come with this unit. They lull you to sleep. They run up and down like the summer league. And if you don't pay attention, they get right back in the game. You're watching 13 Days of 007 on TBS, The Bond Station. With formidable strength and a distinctly individual style, this Sierra is the most powerful half-ton truck in GMC's history. Sierra gives you the style to stand apart from the herd. And the power to pull it. Sierra by GMC, putting you comfortably in command. When we created NHL Faceoff 98, we wanted everything to be exactly like it is in the NHL, even the sound effects. Okay, that's all right, first time. All right, Leclerc, come on! What, are you a figure skater now? Weak. If it's easier, I could probably call my little sister. Well, let's see what you're made out of, John. How's that? Yeah, we got that. PlayStation. Hey, what do you think? Boxers or briefs? Oh, boxers. Oh, briefs. 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 Bikinis. Bikinis. Boxers. Mm. Look, look, no, I'm looking at this guy. <laughs> They're Hanes. Let's just leave it at that. Oh, that was my God. The NBA on TBS is brought to you by GMC, putting you comfortably in command. And by Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. Welcome back to the United Center in Chicago, where the Bulls leading the Lakers as they've had all night, 74 to 58. Typical game for Dennis Rodman. Only two shots from the field, but 12 rebounds. You remember Frank Sinatra with Nancy and the laughing face? Well, this is Dennis with the laughing face. There you go. Well, I tell you, he's working. <laughs> Yeoman's work tonight on the glass. That's why we said at the top, when Harper and Kukoc are scoring, which they are, Pip and Jordan shoots over 50. Rodman gets his 15-plus rebounds. They are so tough to beat. Derek Fisher has come in at point guard defensively for the Lakers. Jason Caffey making his first appearance in the game. Jordan's fall away against the... Brian misses. Longley cleans up. So Luke Longley, 24 points. That is a career high. 
22 that is and he has uh, matched the career high so two more and he's got it here is Kobe Bryant into the hands of Michael Jordan under two minutes remaining in the third quarter the Bulls lead 76 to 58 and Harper hits but the Lakers struggling with the people up front here yeah Jones Eddie Jones Fox and Ori in this game are two for 17. You can't get it done. Where are they going? Because they need those guys defensively to, to create the turnovers to get out in the open floor and their quickness and to be good three-point shooters. And Eddie Jones got into foul trouble. Kobe Bryant with 16 points, 78 to 60. So Bryant, who came in as the top bench scorer in the NBA at 17 plus a game. Harper with Jordan Longley Brown and Jason Caffey. And a good play by Eddie Jones over the top, knocking the ball away. Eddie Jones, one of the top defensive players in the NBA, one of the ranking leaders in steals, creates one there. Jones gets his own rebound, and Eddie Jones has it slapped away. And number six still has it. Jones, one of nine from the field, now making one of ten. So Eddie Jones can't find it tonight. So on top of the front court, as you pointed out, not getting anything done, their leading scorer with Shaq out of action, one for 10 from the field. Under a half a minute remaining in the third quarter, Michael Jordan with the short jumper, 29 for MJ. Well, the difference between the two teams, one team is staying within what they run. They're getting nice, high percentage shots. The Lakers on the other end, everything is a strain. Everything is being challenged by Chicago. And you can see why teams cannot shoot the high percent. The Bulls are all over, and they're helping out, and they challenge you in the lane. Thus, 37% shooting by the Lakers as Kobe Bryant goes to the line with 3.6 seconds remaining in the third. Ron Harper picking up his second foul. Maybe people are curious as to why Kobe Bryant's name is called Kobe. Well, his father, Joe Bryant, played in Italy and loved Kobe beef, which is the really special steak that you get over in Japan. So he decided, I'm sure with his wife's blessing, to name his son Kobe after Kobe beef. Better than being called uh, sirloin. <laughs> Take it easy on me, kid. No. I'm not even touching that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> there you see the Lakers bench still doing a good job tonight. The, the starters have not, but the bench has come in and been effective. Randy Brown at the buzzer misses. And that is the end of the third quarter. Luke Longley tying a career high with 22 points. Michael Jordan, however, leads everybody with 29. And after three... The Chicago Bulls lead the L.A. Lakers by a score of 80 to 61. With formidable strength, a distinctly individual style, and the strongest V8 in its class, this is the most powerful Sierra in GMC's history. Sierra gives you the style to stand apart from the herd. And the power to pull it. Sierra by GMC, putting you comfortably in command. Yo. Alan, what's going on? How you doing? So how do you like the answer at DMX? Feeling it when I do my move. Oh, uh, your crossover, right? Yeah. I've been studying you, trying to figure <laughs> it out. I just make the defender think I'm going one way. And then once he gets his body leaning in that direction, I just cross it over to the other hand and go right by him. So that air is moving under your feet? Yeah, it's like I don't even think about it. I just do it and I'm out. You're out? Yeah, ghost. Ghost, huh? Disappear. Like a ghost. Yeah. I get it now. Yeah, I get it. From director Steven Spielberg, Jeffrey Lyons calls Amistad unforgettable. Rolling Stone says Anthony Hopkins is sensationally good. What this case concerns is freedom the very nature of man and siskel and ebert give amistad two thumbs up morgan freeman anthony hopkins jaiman hansu matthew mcconaughey amistad rated r now playing in select cities Robin.
things. In the bedroom? Ah, it's the wife. She says we're drifting apart. My favorite marital aid, a Samsung. Digital, wireless, phone. A phone? It does everything but vibrate. You can call your wife from any place. Samsung. I love it. Advanced technology products to meet all your communication needs. Take my advice. A small telephone from a big company. Great finish to show you from New Jersey, where Detroit had run the last 11 against the Nets. But Kendall Gill, nursing a two-point lead, steps back and buries a three-pointer. And that's a five-point lead for the Nets at that point. New Jersey celebrating. They get the monkey off their backs tonight, beating the Pistons 105-101. Grand Hill with 25 in the game. Brian Williams had 18. Keith Van Horn, the rookie, 22 points to help the Nets. Back to United Center. We're back here as we get ready for the start of the fourth quarter. You know, Hubie, other than the 76ers and the Toronto Raptors, there is not an easy night in the Eastern Conference for any one of these teams. Absolutely, Dick. It's going to be a mad rush for the playoffs. You, you have 12 legitimate teams trying for eight spots. Now, at the end of three, Chicago shooting 48%, L.A. 37. L.A. only two for 13 and threes. Free throws are a wash, but the battle of the boards, Chicago by a plus 12. Rick Fox with Sean Rooks, Kobe Bryant, Corey Blunt, and Derek Fisher in a steal by Randy Brown. And on the crossover, he is fouled before the shot. And the foul is against uh, Kobe Bryant. He has four. So Eddie Jones and Kobe Bryant, the two shooting guards tonight, each with four personal fouls. Well, with this group out there, uh, you know, with Burwell and Brown, they are two very, very quick defenders. Longley, Cappy, out there along with Ron Harper in an offensive foul against uh, Luke Longley. Good call. That's that guard around. That's Luke Longley's fourth. When he caught the ball, he turned and gave a back screen. Now, you know they're taught to do that. Now, just keep an eye on this. Now, just watch the back screen. See, as he turns, he screens. But it was too quick. You got to give the player a one step, one step there. So it was an excellent call. Kobe Bryant picked up by Ron Harper. Lakers trying to make a run without their starting guards. Man, excellent Jones in there, and Rick Fox banks it in. So only the second basket by the forwards. Two of eight for Fox. And Fox came in on fire. He, you know, he's been really scoring a lot of points lately. Averaging about 18 a game, and uh, you thought that maybe you know he was feeling feeling that he belongs in that offensive flow. Sean Rooks inside against uh, Luke Longley will send Longley to the line. Fox, by the way, coming off a 30-point game against the Houston Rockets. There is Eddie Jones. It hasn't been his night. Three points, four personal fouls. As the Chicago Bulls making a statement against the Lakers here. They'll meet again February 1st at the Great Western Forum. And there are many people who think the Lakers and Bulls will meet in the NBA Finals come June. Of course, you talk to the people in Seattle and some of the other contenders in the East. They have other thoughts. Longley with a career high now of 23 points. And on the turnover. Ron Harper. The Bulls are not a blazing fast break type of team. They'd rather lope and then they find their people with a couple of passes. It's not usually a guy dribbling in a one pass in a layup. Happy open and hits. Jason Cappy coming off a season's high 18 points and 18 rebounds against Phoenix. And they were doing the job with Rodman off the boards in that last game. Yeah, and he was rewarded by not playing in the first half. Okay. <laughs> he wants more playing time. Phil Jackson said, sorry, you're just not going to get it with this rotation. <laughs> I hope my car gets fixed today. <laughs> <laughs> and my sink. <laughs> and my furnace. <laughs> my lawnmower what you idiot you're gonna get us caught for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down Eddie! make it a bud light <laughs> take it
thinking you want to spend whatever you want. Four ways to fun all day to run. Now, spin to Plymouth. In style, baby. Let me take you on a spin. However you spin it, it's affordable, it's fun. It's all the way Plymouth. Can I take you on a spin? That's Plymouth. The game really is a lot like jazz. You can take a, a jazz quintet and actually liken it to it. five people on a basketball court. The point guard would be like the piano player, because in most bands, the piano is like the brain. Then you have the power forward, which is like the drummer. I think that small forward position, I'd have to give that to that tennis saxophone. But I, I think if I was a coach, I wouldn't put me in the game. I play a good anthem, man. Sixers, Friday night at 8, the NBA's on TNT. 20-point lead by the Chicago Bulls. Recently, Michael Jordan moved ahead of Moses Malone into third place in the all-time scoring list. But maybe startling is the games these guys have played, Hubie. Yeah, you look right there. Michael has done in 872 games the amount of points. But how about the fact that Kareem has played 500 more games than Wilt? And then when you divide the 500 games into the difference right here of 7,000 points, it comes out to about 14 points a game. So it gives you an idea of how awesome Wilt was when he was out on the floor. When you, when you think about how many times he scored over uh, 50 points a game. Kobe Bryant up and under and fouled by Luke Longley as the Jordan is uh, guarding. Kobe Bryant five personal fouls on Luke Longley who has established a career high for points tonight. Well this is just a strong move by Kobe. You can see uh, when he's out on the floor he has the instincts and the ability the athletic talent to always get off a shot no matter what whether he's open whether he's in traffic and then to be able to draw the a foul in order to possibly be a potential three point scorer in the lane. Joe Klein will come in for Luke Longley. Joe Klein added to the Bulls this year, 13th year out of Arkansas, well traveled, but a good man to have as an extra big man. He replaces Longley, who goes out with 23 points. Kobe Bryant, in 21 minutes, has scored 19 points tonight. 18 point Bulls lead. With the Lakers, you're saying, hey, there's 10 minutes to go, you're not giving up. You're just saying we need some stops or some turnovers. No stop there. 31 for Michael Jordan. Chicago Bulls destined to exceed their offensive output. So there's no question that the way it's going that the Bulls style with the defense and technical. And a technical against the Robert Ory. At least he's got something in his column. He has no points and no personal fouls and now picks up the team. Well, it's interesting because, as you know, he's added 15 pounds this year in building up his body. And it's, he, he's ranked 21st in steals, 36th in rebounds, 17 in blocks. He's doing everything from a defensive standpoint for the Lakers. But when we, we go back when he was with Houston, when they won the rings, he was a perimeter scorer rebounder shot blocker. He was a big three point shooter and a big scorer like 14 15 points a game. Not much of an offensive threat similar to what Ron Harper was more of an offensive player before he came to Chicago. Kind of regained that again and an offensive foul is the call. Yeah at that time. Uh, yeah Michael was being roughed up in the post there by Brian Mike and Michael had to put an elbow into his chest there. Four personal fouls on Michael Jordan, who has 32 points in the game, many of them from the free throw spike. Kobe Bryant with a fall away, and Jason Caffey the rebound. Chicago Bulls trying to make it three in a row against the L.A. Lakers. Trying to let the Lakers know that uh, despite their 14 and 9 record struggling on the road, this team hasn't given up its bid for yet another world title. And they know they get Scotty Pippen back in January. Right up. 
Nick Van Exel gets it to Rick Fox. Fox working against Scott Burrell, who gets a piece of it. Good defensive play by Burrell. Out of bounds. Last touch by the Lakers. Yeah, that's another an indication of what we're talking about. This team has not given up anything defensively. They are all over the Lakers. They've met the challenge for every minute that we have played here this evening, but this is how they play defense most nights. Michael Jordan gets two more. 34 for Jordan and the Bulls playing on both ends of this, as if this score were tied. Not a 23-point lead. Bryant. And here's Robert Ory from outside. Elvin Campbell in the game. Follows with a jumper. And Scott Burrell the rebound. This is a good old-fashioned whipping that the Lakers are getting tonight at the hands of the world champ. Klein with his first shot. Elvin Campbell has it slapped away by Jordan. Love the way the Bulls have not given an inch, even with their big lead most of the game. Jordan trying to get it inside, but the Lakers get it back. Here is Kobe Bryant with a reverse layup. Beautiful. Great move by Kobe Bryant. See, he has the vision in that move to see that the guy was coming for the shot block. And all he did was continue in the air and come up on the other side and use the rim. 21 points for Kobe Bryant. Seven on the shot clock, and Burrell is fouled by Rick Fox. Let's see Kobe in action again. Now just watch as the defender comes right into your picture, right there for the shot clock. Just the presence to stay within the shot, don't force it, float underneath and finish. I mentioned how he got his first name, Kobe. <laughs> Look at the impact tonight. 23 minutes, 21 points to lead the team, and he has nearly half of the Lakers second half points a 26 nothing to shout about a little advice from the master right here well the one thing about him is that uh, sure the Lakers call him showboat showtime they they kid him uh, about the fact that he's a highlight film but there is not one person who doesn't think he's going to be the superstar of the future and everyone likes the fact that he has humility and that he asks for advice right. from legendary players from coaches and he's a very well-mannered and he talks to everyone he was brought up well absolutely plus he comes in with college board scores of 1080 could have attended any university in the united states and uh, you kind of like it. he's got the total package i bet you michael jordan was saying well why didn't you go to north carolina <laughs> instead of coming into the league and played a couple of years there Eddie Jones is short. Then he would have said, well, I wouldn't have played for Dean Smith this year. There you go. But Bill Guthridge is doing a great job this he season. Sure is. Here is Cappy. And Burrell keeps it alive. Burrell acted, making the most of his playing time in the second half. Jordan looking for room and hits the jumper. 36 points now for Michael Jordan, coming off a big game against Phoenix on Monday night of 31. Joe Klein gets the rebound. Uh, and here's Randy Brown with Kobe back. Great pass behind his back. Spectacular passing inside. And it will be last touch by the Bulls. And a timeout call. Del Harris allowed his starters to stay out on the floor. He was looking for a run. He did not get it six minutes to go. Best. Do a Jeep style. Now drop your top in the Wrangler. In my world, affordability and versatility have become my classic style. And oh, baby, come on, experience my mellow grooves and mellow moves in the Grand Cherokee Pipe 9 Limited. Now, if you want to roll with me, buy your own. So, he really plays in them? Yeah, Mark Brunel in the Nike Air Marauder. Almost took him all the way last year. A scrambler like him needs some real tracks to make the plays he does. Terry Collins has the same shoes too, right? You bet. He took him right past San Fran and through Cowboy Country. Incoming. Nobody gets you closer to the game than Foot Locker, where it all begins. Size 4 flowered dress, 
New color lipstick, $15. Haircut, $25. Autofocus camera, $260. Five generations in one photograph, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Accept it all over, even photo labs. Biggest lead of the game right now for the Bulls with six minutes to go in the fourth, 92 to 67. Tomorrow on TBS, Timothy Dalton stars as James Bond in the living daylights, part of 13 days of 007. Tomorrow night, beginning at 8.05 Eastern, only on the Superstation. Now you can see the rebounding has just been a total mismatch in favor of Chicago. But we said at the top of the show, Chicago is not shooting well in any category. Field goals, threes, or the foul line. But they beat you with defense and rebounding. And they're showing it and proving it to us tonight. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the Lakers are held to their season's low, which is 84 points when they were beaten at home by the Cleveland Cavaliers, 94-84. They've got 67 right now. Eddie Jones off the rim out of bounds. And it is still Lakers ball. Now they have Eddie Jones and Ori still in there, but they've come uh, with the rest of the uh, guys are substitutes. And then also, Phil Jackson has put in his second unit out there, except for Harper. Steve Kerr, Jason Caffrey. Burrell has been in there with Klein and a jump ball coming up. The Bulls shooting 49%. The Lakers only 34% from the field, and it's been that way throughout the game. Steady, the numbers haven't changed much from the first quarter till now. The reason why this is such a big win for Chicago is the fact that they are only 7-7 seven and seven versus teams that are over 500, playing better than 500 basketball. They have struggled against the good teams. That's why this is big, and, and they're looking good doing it. An adjustment with the clock. That's why we had the whistle. The 24 second clock did not budge. So we will adjust it. Now Scott Perrell came to Chicago in a trade with Golden State for Dickie Simpkins and a draft pick. But he has struggled here. Now we're talking about a player who has really made a major contribution when he was at Charlotte and still scored points at Golden State. And uh, He's a three-point shooter. He's a slasher. But in this triangle offense, he's definitely struggling. He's not giving them the points, but he gives them defense, rebounding, and he gets the loose balls. Ron Harper feeding Jason Caffey, who puts it through. Or on Burrell, he was a star in the Big East at the University of Connecticut and turned down a baseball career as a pitcher. Well, he was a first-round draft pick in baseball, first-round draft pick in basketball. Toronto Blue Jays, I believe, with the team that drafted him first. Corey Blunt, Ori. Loose ball underneath, and Corey Blunt with the lay in. 94 to 69 with under five minutes remaining. And Burrell on the layup. Ruby, I want to ask you about the Bulls. Three men in double figures is what they normally have. When Pippen comes back, are they going to really have more shots for other people and have more people in action as they do now offensively? No, I think what will happen, Dick, they will go right back to Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Tony Kukoc, are their main scorers, their main shot attempt guys. The guy that will suffer will be Luke Longley, and he has stepped up big and has played well without Pippen in there. He has stepped in, he's shooting a high percentage, and he's given them the, you know, he's not giving them night in and night out the Pippen numbers, of course not, because he doesn't get a lot of freebies out on the break and he's not a three-point shooter. But it's just nice to see them finally pass the ball to a center in the triangle offense and give him shot attempts. Mario Bennett, who is the 12th man on this uh, roster, is into the game right now. Bennett, who sat out all of last year, has had two knee operations. Well, he's out of the University of Arizona, played in the uh, CBA for two different teams, and he's just feeling that this is the first time that he has not had pain in his knees since he came out of college. Reflects the ball out to Kerr with two on the shot clock. Steve Kerr, and the clock, shot clock expires. 
And Judd Bushler, who got the layup uh, for the final points of the first half, has come into the game replacing Ron Harper. Harper going out tonight, having scored nine points. Michael Jordan, of course, uh, getting the rest. Well deserved. He scored 36 points. Luke Longley also on the bench after establishing a career high of 23. Kobe Bryant with his second three point basket now with 24 points. Bryant coming off some big games 27 against Houston Friday, topping it with 30 against the Dallas Mavericks Sunday. There's Joe Klein in the low post with the 336 remaining. Turn it over to the Lakers, and here's Bryant. Wow! Let's get the slam dunk back into the All-Star game after that one, huh? I tell you, that was impressive. That was impressive? <laughs> He's impressive. <laughs> you know Michael Jordan is impressed with that. Well, every time that he gets an opportunity from here to the end of the game, he's going to try something. Now, he's made a three, and then that well went. The uh, there yeah. you go. 23 now. 26, I should say, for Kobe Bryant. Happy stuffs it through as we wind down with three minutes to go in the game. 98 to 74, the Chicago Bulls on their way to a very impressive victory over the L.A. Lakers. People wondering whether uh, this is going to be uh, a sign of the future with the Lakers, the future, the Bulls, the past. Hold the phone. Here's John Barry on the turnover. And he is fouled. Well, John carried that one too far. He should have laid it up on the right side of the rim. Now, this is just, uh, Brian, now just keep an eye on this as he elevates up. That's spectacular. We will not have the slam dunk contest in the All-Star game this year. As, uh, I've probably seen its better days. You look at the Lakers, Dick, you made an interesting point a few minutes ago, and that is that the Lakers are a very young team. They have no player over 29 years of age. Elton Campbell is the oldest player at 29. And when you think that when they get Shaq back, the young basketball team going to be together for a while, and you hope that management can lock them all in and allow them to grow. Jerry West won't find a better general manager in the game than Jerry West of the Lakers. Now he's proved it year in and year out. Joe Klein on the turnaround. 100 to 76 with 208 to go. First points of the game for Joe Klein. Kobe Bryant fires and hits a three by Bryant. He's got 29 points and he is one point away from his season's high. He's done it in 27 minutes. Mario Bennett on the steal. And Kobe Bryant gives it back to Mario Bennett. That was significant, Hubie. Yeah, it was. And a uh, nice shot block there by Burrell. Oh, you can see uh, this young man is, is gifted. He's got it all. John Barry rebound on Klein's miss. Minute and a half to go. And they go the other way. Kathy will get the easy stuff. 102 to 79. Eldon Campbell, the elder statesman, as you pointed out, watching things. He scored 15 tonight. Coming up next, scores and highlights. Craig Sager with a sit down with Laker guard Nick Van Exel tonight. Van Exel scoring over 11, only 11 with 1 3. But he has had a uh, glorious season thus far, as has Eddie Jones. But tonight, none of the starters really came through the way Del Harris would have wanted. Caffey with another chance adds to the Bulls lead. Well, you know, Dick, that they go into the Lions then on Friday yes, night. They do. The Lakers go down to Atlanta on Friday, and then they move to Charlotte on Saturday, a day off, and then they move to Houston before getting home. So they've got three big games left there on the strip. They do. They felt uh, pretty good about themselves winning the opener against the Timberwolves, but things uh, moving up in class tonight. And now the Lakers will be one and one on this road trip and eight and five on the road overall. And our butt player of the game is uh, getting a good rest. All he did tonight, 36 points, 12 of 22 from the field and 11 of 12 from the line. And I'm sure that uh, both Eddie Jones and Kobe Bryant took note, although Bryant with a 26 point effort in his own right. 
Brian Burwell, by the way, will be out to interview Michael Jordan after this game is over. It'll be interesting to see what he thinks of uh, Kobe Bryant and what he thinks of the impressive Bulls effort tonight, including his own. Well, the second half drive in the East is going to be some showtime. Uh, Alonzo Morning will be back now uh, with Miami. Uh, we'll see what happens with that ball club. Uh, we have uh, Scotty Pippen hopefully back. New York has always, he's always got to notice. New That's York. right. Indiana and Cleveland playing excellent basketball. Cleveland Charlotte. doing it with four rookies out of their first six players. Charlotte, they've got firepower. Absolutely. This is a dynamite. Dynamite Eastern Conference and the dynamite player at 19 years of age Kobe Bryant now with 32 points and that is a season's high for him so he has gone up the ladder in the last three games 27 Friday against the Rockets 30 Sunday against the Mavericks and he's got 33 points tonight against the Chicago Bulls and you know I, I read a piece in a, in a clip someone said yeah but you know what he doesn't post up <laughs> And you know what? He, I said, what are you kidding? He, he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't ski with one ski either. Yeah, there you go. I mean, uh, this young guy's got a three-point game. What he does do? You name it, he can do it. Game is over, and the Chicago Bulls send a message to the L.A. Lakers. Although Kobe Bryant has sent a message to everyone else that he is the future. Michael Jordan with 36 to lead the Bulls. Kobe Bryant with 33 to top the Lakers. The final score, the Chicago Bulls 104, the L.A. Lakers 83, as the Bulls hold the Lakers to their lowest scoring output of the season, 83 points. And right now, let's go to Brian Burwell. All right, it's not as though at this stage in his career that he needs to make statement games, but Michael Jordan, this was a pretty good statement for, uh, for you tonight. Well, I don't know about a statement. I think, uh, you know, I was just trying to go out there and do my job and see what... You know, see how we can come out and, and, and fight a, a team that's very young, very agile. They're without a key player, but we were able to hold our balance and you know, more or less control the tempo and not, not let them outrun us. We got their big scores in the foul trouble early in the first half. We were able to take advantage of that. Your evaluation of the young fella, Kobe? I remember I was young like that. You know, he certainly has a lot of skills, and you see that. And you know, he's got a lot of confidence, and I think it's just a matter of time for him. You know, it's, you, when you realize how good he is, he's actually he's in his second year of college. And uh, well, certainly he's learned a lot. He's in, he's in a top he's in a top league, actually, and he's certainly going to learn a lot more. He's going to be a lot better if he keeps improving. Any, uh, did you impart any wisdom to him to, throughout the game? Oh, yeah, he asked me one question when we were down, uh, you know, bent down a half court, and he wanted to know how, when I turn around on my jump shot, how to lock the defense or how to get the feel the defense. I told him you should feel the defense with your legs. Once you feel the defense is a leg, you more or less got to feel where the defense is, and you can take advantage of that. So you 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 don't have a problem giving away trade secrets during the game? Not at all. You know, it's just a matter of you know. I think that that enhances his his basketball skill, and you know, uh, someone did that for me. And certainly, I I'm not against giving him any kind of you know hints about his game if he asks. I'm certainly not gonna you know come out and, and try to you know give him too much information. The kids he's learned a lot in, in the short amount of time he's been in the league, and believe me, he's gonna continue to learn. Just like to wonder what he would have done in a Carolina blue uniform, right? <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Michael. Let's go back to Dick and Hubie. Well, they said that Dr. J was a great ambassador to the NBA. You just talked to another one, the current one, Michael Jordan. Jordan and Brian each were a point-a-minute player tonight as the Bulls win 104-283. And we'll be right back to the United Center in Chicago after these messages. Here in Chicago, the Bulls make it three in a row and go 15 and nine on the year, beating the Lakers, who have their three-game winning streak snapped. L.A. now 18 and six, ball a full game behind the Seattle Sonics. Interesting uh, hearing Michael Jordan talk to Brian Burwell about how Kobe. You just said that earlier. He's not afraid to ask questions, and that's a great sign for the kid. Well, you, you have to admit the young guy is doing it. He's not a hardhead. He wants to learn. He asked the guy uh, a major point here. Uh, how do I feel at defense? And, and it's great that Michael would take the time and respect the young men because everyone knows this young guy is humble. He's blessed with great talent, and he's not afraid to ask questions. Pretty impressive uh, victory, though, by the Chicago Bulls. Well, the Bulls were at their best. Anytime they get 100, Dick, you know, that's a plus. The other people, 34% from the field, 4 for 18 and threes. 
Get killed on the boards by 18. Can't get it done on the road. They'll have a rematch February 1st, but tonight it was all Chicago Bulls. That's the story from here at the United Center. Right now, let's send it to our Atlanta studios to Vince and Cheryl. Thanks, Dick. And just a reminder, Inside the NBA is coming up in just a moment. Tonight, Alonzo Mourning returns back in.